The past is your playground. Abstergo. Hello, Initiate. Recently, Abstergo Historical Research began several new projects in London. We both know that when Abstergo makes big moves, the Templars are up to something. We think they're hot on the trail of a new piece of Eden. I've got people in London looking for it. Hey, Bishop! Jacob and Evie Fry are twins. How awesome is that? Speak of the devil. Fire up your cameras, Bex. I've got a picture. ETA on the payload. Sending it now. A lot to sift through. I'm gonna get the initiates on it ASAP. You look weird with a weapon. Let's plant a little bug and see what we can see. Got something. Isabel Ardant has a meeting here in a few hours. Uh, doesn't say with who. Doesn't say with whom, Rebecca. I suppose it's down to Muggins here to find out. Hold on. The mission was to find data to locate a piece of Eden in London. We did. And now I am eager to try this new kit. I don't like it when those two go off book like this. Well, all we can do is take a deep breath and move forward. You'll be searching for the piece of Eden through the lives of Jacob and Evie Fry. Twin assassins who operated in Victorian London. Your first set of genetic memories are downloaded. Good luck. Brother George, it is as I feared. London has fallen. Thrice I have written to you begging your aid. Thrice you've responded with silence. And yet I write again. So desperate my need, so few my options. I need you. London needs you. You would say it is too great of a task, or that it is not yet time to strike. Patience, you would counsel. But whilst you wait, the Templars consolidate their power. They have chosen a Grand Master so ruthless, so thorough, one might think Reginald Birch himself had returned. His name is Crawford Starrick, and he intends to rule the world. There is no aspect of society he does not control, no industry that escapes his grim touch. By day, it is corrupt merchants and venal politicians who hold court. Come night, a vicious street gang known as the Blighters strikes terror in the hearts of all. There is no business untainted by his poison, no person unexploited, be it by duplicity or force. Our enemy has designs on the highest office of them all. And so, as you look inward, and dare I say it, afraid, Crawford Starrick's ambition is fixed on the beyond, to kingdoms and continents as yet unconquered, though not for long, for he knows, as I have warned you time and time again, whosoever controls London, controls the world. The iron ships from here. The Templar running things is Rupert Ferris and our target one. Target two is Sir David Brewster, who's got his hands on a bauble that could ruin us in this wretched war. Think you both can handle it? What a question. All right, my mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, the unstoppable Fry twins. See them nightly at Covent Garden. George, honestly, I've studied the plans of the laboratory and have every route covered. And I've got all I need right here. I'll extend your regards to Ferris. Chat later, George. We've a train to catch. Jacob! Evie! May the creed guide you, you vagrants! Poor man. More afraid than ever. Years have not been kind. Evie Fry, where do you get it from? The same place as you, Jacob. Have fun. <laughs> Don't 
and die. them for my head. and I have my route to Ferris. Sanitary inspector. This man is dead. You're the dead man! Run along home. You can't teach you how to beg for mercy.
Mr. Ferris, sir, the, uh, the lad in the factory should be taken to be bandaged by the apothecary. Fine, but dock his wages. Yes, sir. Shall we arrive at a final price, Mr. Ferris? to generate a steady profit for many... It is done. Oh? What did you accomplish? 
boy. A bolt loosened in Starrick's machine. A large bolt, but not enough. Your Grandmaster will fall. You assassins can circle London to your heart's content. The mechanism we have built has been going strong for a hundred years, and will run a thousand more. It is the very city itself. We will take London from your hands. From Croydon? You lurk in the shadows like a coward. I doubt it. We seem to have made an unscheduled stop. next time I'll walk. Yard. Guard quarters. Bruce's laboratory. This is where the piece of Eden will be located. No loose ends. Now, did a couple the locomotive and create a diversion. Well, where is it? Huh? Where's Brewster's supplies? Meter.
to deploy the diversion. I'm on my way, Sir David. like Jacob's cooking. That should keep you busy while I head into your lab. me down the tracks. You stay here. And keep a look at. All right. I'll shout if I get any bother. First for a bird's eye view. Can't be too careful. How will it come apart? Not your concern. Bring back the cargo. I need two more weeks with the device. Your questionable practices are beginning to draw unwanted attention. You have been given more than enough time to achieve results, Sir David. I was unaware that you expected me to perform like a cocker spaniel. Permit me to remind you of your obligation to the Order. Miss Thorne, you ride me like a racehorse. Sir David, I will return tomorrow. If you have not unlocked the device's secrets, forget your dogs and horses. I will leave you to the wolves. Good day. I was merely promised a tour of the premises, my lords. 
Who sent you? It's one of green spies. Get that man to interrogation. Then I want him brought to the lab. What a pity. But no deviations from the mission. week when I went to the fight, but she... Ah, thank you kindly. I was in ever such a squeaky fix when, what do you know? You rescue me. Where's the hidden laboratory? Untie me and then we can parlay, my lady. I'm pressed for time. Tell me now. It's underground. Requires a key. One of the guards nicked mine, cheeky sod. Thank you. Uh, now, untie me? You got yourself in? I trust you can get yourself out again. Not to worry, my lady. Can still recall a couple of tricks from me carnival days. Charming. Miss Thorne will have your guts for gardens. Let's have a butcher's downstairs then. I want to see that artifact. Not if you value your life. Got 
about it. There you are, the entrance to Bruce's lab. of Eden. Increase the electricity. But it'll become unstable, sir. You heard what Miss Thorne said. We need results now. Of sour milk, but what a 
Time to lay down your head, Sir David Brewster. But I have so much more to discover. Do not be afraid. I'm not. God will protect me. I will continue your experiment. You will not stop, Staric. Miss Thorne has already found another piece of Eden, more powerful than the last. I will take that one too. Will we fight to gain what we cannot take with us? It's in our nature. Was that explosion? What explosion? EV. Piece of Eden detonated and took the lab with it. The magic lump of hyperbolic metal. I'm shocked. Simply because you have never valued the pieces does not All mean... went according to plan, hmm? <clears throat> there was a slight complication. How slight? The lab exploded. Jacob. You derailed a train. Oh, he did. Did he? Well, the train derailed and I happened to be on it. I killed my target. Brewster is also no more. Then all in all, a successful mission in spite of you two. What about London? What about it? We're wasting our time out here. You know as well as I do that London has been the domain of the Templars for the last hundred years. They are far too strong yet. Patience. But the Templars have found a new piece of Eden. Sir David is dead. They do not know how to use it. The Council shall guide us. Sound advice that your father would have seconded. I shall see you back in Crawley. Patience, Evie. Ah, oh, the gentle sound of opportunity passing us by. So what's stopping us? London is waiting to be liberated. Forget Crawley. Father would have wanted us to listen. Oh, Father, you could continue his legacy in London. Freeing future generations from a city ruled by Templars. You know, Jacob Fry, you might just be right. Then shall we? Yes, let's. Onward to London. I 
know, I know. You've only had a taste of our latest acquisition from Abstergo. But I want to check in on Sean and Rebecca. I still think attacking a Templar is a mistake. Dr. Grammatica. Oh, come on. Who is a pal? What a lovely surprise. Our mutual friends will be here shortly to search for the artifact. Once it's located, I'll let you know. Super. Always a pleasure. Prick. It's people like you that give historians a bad name. I'm afraid I don't have time for you today, Mr. Hastings. Thank you for making my job easy. Oh, shit. It does look grim. Masterberg, Agent Acosta. Deal with them, please. Move it! Hunt them down! All they had to do was wait for you to search the data. Their little stunt has put the whole operation at risk. You need to synchronize Jacob and Evie's memories. Find something that puts us ahead of the enemy. Time is of the essence, and lives are now clearly on the line. Good luck. I've never seen so many people all at once. <laughs> Churning seas of London. It's just the way Father described. Now, to find Henry Green and formulate a plan of attack against the Templars. Is Mr. Green again? The assassin watching over London? Did you not listen the first three times? Listen to what? <gasps> Oi, watch it. Ben, pardon, sir. Oi! Come back here, you filthy Jacob, dipper! Stop! Mobsman. Keep it. Well, well. What do we have here? You're on our property. This is your last battle. Enjoy. does London have to offer? Now is not the time for tourism, Jacob. Now's the time to find Henry Green. I've always been the quicker climber, haven't I? Not since we were two. I saw a murder! My heart's going 19 to the battle. You're going to lose again! Not on my watch! shop located. It was marked on Father's map. Two assassins. Equal in height. One female, one male. Two decades old, and those devilish smiles. You must be the Fry Twins. And you are? Henry Green, at your service. I was sorry to learn about your father's passing. Thank you. What can you tell us about Crawford Starrick? I suppose the Council desires news. London must be freed to provide a better future for all of its citizens. Well, thank goodness the Council saw reason and sent you to aid us. Yes. Thank goodness. Unfortunately, I am the bearer of bad news. Today, Starrick sits at the helm of the most sophisticated Templar infrastructure known in the Western world. Every class, every borough, the gangs, the industries, his reach extends all across London. I've always thought of myself as a gang leader. 
firm, but fair. Huh. Well, I have uniforms. And I'll unite a mix of disenfranchised outsiders under one name. That's it, Evie. We can rally them to our side. Oh, like the way that you rallied those car players at the Oakbrook Tavern into the river. Oh, that was different. They beat me at whist. I can see it now. We'll call ourselves the Rooks. You were never good at chess either. Have you got a better plan? Find the piece of Eden. Oh, well, let me show you the lay of the land. Shall we? Find the chimney and see all of London for yourself. at what Starrick has done to the city. Whitechapel is riddled with crime. Child labor, despite regulations. A gang known as the Blighters overruns the streets, and Templars manipulating behind the scenes. As in all the other boroughs, we need to return this city to the people who built it in the first place. We will free London from Starrick. You have my word. I my rooks. Miss Fry, your passion is inspiring. Come, let us return to my shop and I can bring you up to date on the rest. One of Starrick's gang leaders. Why does he want you? He's after some of my more arcane research into one of the precursor artifacts. The Peace of Eden. So tell me about these blighters. In search of an army, Starrick gathered up the nastiest of the underworld. Some of the city's gangs tried to prevent it and were slaughtered for their efforts. Now, only Whitechapel's clinkers remain opposed, but they're no match for the blighters. Well, let's shine these clinkers up then, shall we? They're just the sort we're looking for. You can't be serious. Evie, they're ready to fight and oppose the blighters. This is my chance to step in. Look out, London. Here come the rooks. this city no one looks where they're going yes i've noticed that bloody drood i'll never finish it at this rate only providence knows where those words are headed now well i must get to work replacing them should you ever be in the mood for a tale or two you can always find me where the ale is warm and tempers are hot ta-ta what an odd man that mr fry was charles dickens knows everyone and everything in the city. If I were you, I would keep that connection in your back pocket. <clears throat> Kalok's gang is nearby. They must not follow me back to my shop. We'll take care of it. Yeah, you might be able to use this. Oh God, I hope so. My carriage is nearby. Make use of it to throw them off my trail. I will meet you at the curio shop. That's the way. We need to lead them away from green. Here comes trouble. They carry the day lock to rule the day. Now to return to Mr. Green. Aye, aye, Captain. You're relentless. 
That relentlessness will see me become master when we finish this. George would do nothing of the sort. Whatever's left of the creed would perish under your control. Harsh words, dear sister. I do hope Mr. Green made it back safely. Don't tell me you fancy the bloke already. And what do you suggest we do if our number one source of information turns up dead? Starry can't be that hard to find. I say we turn the carriage round and go find him. This is why you aren't in charge. Slow down now! Did you give them the slip? We gave them more than that. <laughs> Who are all these people? Over the years, I have established a number of connections across the city. Splendid. We'll need focused aid. Focused aid? <sighs> we take over Starek's gangs, we cripple his control. You're not aiming high enough. Starek has influence in every branch of society. We need to match him. I see what you're saying, Evie. We need the Rooks. You are not starting a gang called the Rooks. I believe I may have an idea of my own. We will need the police to turn a blind eye to activities. My ally in the force, Sergeant Abilene. I've heard he's a master of disguise. Next up, urchins. 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 Children make for excellent spies. Clara O'Day. Smart as a whip, that one. Finally, you would be wise to remember that Starrick never acts alone. There are gang leaders in every borough. You'll meet them soon enough, no doubt. Rexford Kaylock, known for his ability to vanish before your very eyes. Should we make him vanish for real? I suppose. One moment. Um, a Templar target you might want to look into. Uh, be cautious. It's rough out there. No, don't worry about me, Greeny. I can handle a few thugs. Don't worry. Oh. I don't see Mr. Abilene. Well, we tried. I may know a thing or two about that splendid fellow you're talking about. What's this? God's sake! Are you trying to blow the gaff? What? Sergeant Abilene, at your service. I presume you're the Fry Twins Green mentioned. I was expecting you to be a policeman. I was expecting you to be discreet. Henry Green said that you could help us go unnoticed. This is how it will work. I will give you the names of criminal gang members. You will bring them back to me. Quietly. Oh, we'll be as quiet as an old lady. A very hairy, strange old lady that looks a lot like a policeman. to remain within the bounds of the law, for my sake. Blade. What is it that you think I've done? 
Collecting rent from people who don't owe you a shilling. Yeah, Silence me and half the richies in this bloody city. city. You gonna kidnap them too? Maybe, but I'm starting with you. Him behind bars. Thank you. What is this place? It's nice to meet you both at last. This is Babylon Alley. Here we make it our business to know the streets and provide children with the opportunity to control their own destinies. Clara, Mr. Green said we might be able to help one another. In exchange for our services, we ask a small favor. Well, why not? You seem to have taken most of my money. Why not take a small favor too? There are several factories about the city that are powered almost entirely by child labor. Those children work long hours with little pay, and most are not permitted even to leave the factory grounds. They suffer terribly. I need you to save them. A small favor. In return, we offer you intelligence, something you clearly need. Oh, hold on a minute. I'm late for an appointment. What are these terms? We accept. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you.
Must be one of the clinkers. Good place to start. seem to want my employer's attention, Mr. Fry. Oh, I positively crave it. But you'll do for now. As you like. All that stands between you and Whitechapel is the villain controlling the borough. Kaylock has demanded you settle the claim for territory in a gang fight. His loss? Yeah. I'm sure you can put this to better use than I can. Oh, what's this, Greeny? Assassin Christmas. <laughs> Gather your allies. Mr. Rexford Kaylock has agreed to your terms and waits for you at the Whitechapel train station. He's bet his train on the fight. No Kaylock. Hmm. No matter. Attack! to be broken. Oh well, at least we have a train now. It's not all bad. Chapel is no longer in the hands of the blighters. 
You now have the chance to join our ranks. We welcome all who would stand up to Steric and his cutthroats. I'd rather throw myself to the tracks and run Bertha another mile for that dirty bull bag. Kaylock? <laughs> He's left the station. Mel! Hello, fancy pants. And who might you I'm Evie be? Fry, and this is my brother, Jacob Fry. Pleased to meet you. I'm Agnes McBean. A delight. I thought I was getting a promotion. I suppose I'm out of work now. Come work for us instead. <laughs> I ain't bail your heat. You pay better than scraps? Oh, I'm sure we can at least match that. <laughs> then may I present to you Agnes and Bertha, lady and locomotive, at your service. I'll be in the next car. A hideout on the rails? What an excellent idea. Yes, it all worked out rather well. Now, I would like to follow up a lead on... Jacob? Is this serious? I'm not doing anything until this gets fixed. I believe I know someone who can help with that. I knew you would, Greeny. You know, a might of money goes a mickle bit in this city. Think of the power of good you can do with the purse you bring. You talk of a store in London. Well, now's your chance. That there map shows who to speak to. Old friends, if you will. Give him a whiff of that sterling, and maybe you can save us all from... Them. Alec, whatever is the matter? I have been intercepting nothing but poppycock propaganda about soothing syrup and whatnot. No, I swear to high heavens, if Starrick's monopoly continues... Alec, I beg your pardon. These are friends of mine. Evie Fry and her brother, Jacob. Oh, um... Alexander Graham Bell. Linguist, inventor and technical expert. Alec, I have something of a favour to ask you. Can you fix this? Oh, looks like the casing is cracked. Oh, comes apart. <laughs> I see. Could have used one of these to fit my fuses on top of Big Ben. Alec is installing a new telegraph line for our Free Press Association. To combat the Static Telegraph Company. Now, if I can mend the fuses connecting independent lines from Big Ben, Static will be weakened. Only we are somewhat at a handicap. And there. Oh, I've removed the mechanism, so it may work with your bracer. I'll put it to use immediately. <laughs> Jacob, wait. Mr. Bell, allow me to help you with your fuses. Oh, you will not find me too proud to accept Miss Fry. Oh, uh, we can use my carriage, if you'd be so good as to hold the reins, though. I'll take that. Um, I, I can help you. Miss Fry, I am so glad you could assist me. Uh, you really ought to be here by now. 
So, Mr. Bell, what inventions are you concocting? I intend to develop a phonetic telegraph that does not just convey dots and dashes, Miss Fry, but the human voice. Phonetic telegraph? Hmm. Sounds a bit of a mouthful. You could just call it a telephone. A telephone? <laughs> How bizarre. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, the press has become entirely you know. dependent on the Static Telegraph Company. Which is why Mr. Green has asked you to set up a free line. Yes. What is more, yes, other small independent companies have had their lines sabotaged, and they have little means of finding any broken fuses, which are... To be found on top of Big Ben. Correct. Especially as one needs a special government pass to get through the guards. They will not... Clear problem. I'll repair the fuses. <laughs> Lovely view. set.
That should do it. Thank you very much, Miss Fry. I will now be able to continue with the installation of the new line. If there's anything else I can do to help... But, certainly. Please do come and visit. Oh, uh, I was toying with this device and have noted down the formula for you. It's not perfect yet, but by golly, it works. Why? 
Miss Fry, uh, I was just showing Jacob the first message was received via the mended lines. Oh, uh, you can keep the rope launcher, by the way. Um, we've managed to procure another one for your brother. Excellent work. Thank you again. You're very welcome, Mr. Bell. We can now defend the principle of impartial news and free speech. Free is fair, but free and brief is far better. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, Fry, such caustic wit. <laughs> And on that note, we must depart. <laughs> oh, uh, good fortune to you both. Uh, call on me at any time. Now that we've finished with that distraction... Who is that? Oh, you mean... You don't know? Beautiful train you got here. Miss McBean was just telling me all about her. Name's Ned. How do you do? I won't take up more of your time. Uh, if you want to learn a thing or two about the finest transit systems in the world, you can find me at this address. Let us return to locating the Peace of Eden. We need to reclaim London from Staric. Who are my targets? It's not time for that yet. I didn't come to London to hunt Cheerios. First understand the dance, only then become the dancer. Oh, so you're taking over where father left off. Someone has to. Evie, finding the precursor artifact will give us an insight into what the temple is intended. Jacob, I have information about Starek's associates that should be of use to you. Here. This soothing syrup has become the only medicine available in Lambeth. It bears the Templar Grandmaster's name. About time for a visit to the doctor. I don't see that cure arriving anytime soon. And what exactly will you be doing, might I ask? You know very well. Tracking down the Peace of Eden. Enjoy your studies. I'll be out killing Templars. Oh, 
Oh, dear. This is going very badly, isn't it? It certainly doesn't have the makings of a ripping good novel. What happened here? Ah. The charming and delightful Fry Twins. Have we met? Mr. Raymond knows everyone. He knows everything about this city. He writes it all up in his books. I'm Henry Raymond, writer of third-rate, lurid stories. Penny dreadfuls, if you will. And this is Little Artie. Mr. Raymond takes real murders and makes them so awfully exciting. The guilty always get caught. There's one unfolding just here. Perhaps one of you would like to try your hand in solving it. so delightfully entertaining, don't you? I mean, solving crimes, of course. Finding a solution is exhilarating. I arrived to find the foreman dead, and the lad duly with bloody hands. No one's been able to find the murder weapon and arrest the murderer. Could you sort it out quickly? It's holding up the work. They're a rough bunch, but someone has to keep the kids in line. I just wish the grown-ups would quit fighting each other. me to the ground and give me a kick. I find me work knife under me and grab it. I lift me hands to protect myself and he knocks me out with a punch. Later on I wakes up and the man's lying there, dead. He's my brother. He don't like to work hard, so one of the workers give him a thrashing. I tried to stop it and he stops him bark and starts it in me. about this. lying dead, and there's Dooley holding a knife. Please don't arrest him. I was standing there, having a think, when a fella come at me and give me a thumping. Dooley tries to stop him, and he thrashes Dooley. I run out to find help. That's Dooley's knife, all right. He never lent it to nobody.
Oh, no, no, no. Not so quickly. You have indeed solved this murder, according to the facts at hand. However, Artie, what advice would you give? I would encourage you to look beyond the obvious. Beyond surface appearances. Try again. Use your powers to peer more deeply and see what you can discover. to establish a motive. Oops. Me and Wilkins was working out here. We heard screaming. Wilkins went to see what it was about and never come back. I went to see for myself, and there he was, dead. I didn't stick around. Somebody might think I'd done it. <laughs> the strange thing is, Wilkins weren't wearing no bandana when I was talking to him. Only the workmen in the brewery wear bandanas. You should talk to Morris there. wasn't the type to beat the children. On the contrary, he was forever getting in fights, trying to stop that sort of thing. The fumes can be a bit much in the brewery. When the men work in there, they wear bandanas. Which suspect has the opportunity to kill him? Well, I was inside the brewery all day. I wear me bandana in there. Man has to, what with all the smells and fumes. I don't much know who smokes here. Oh. Maybe Taylor. Cigarette might be his. Oh. This is outright uncouth. We live in a civilized society. I quit smoking months ago. You know. I saw somebody from the brewery having a smoke this morning. Didn't see what was so. <laughs> well, like I said, I was inside. Didn't get a chance to come out to smoke. Colton left, though. You could talk to him. He's working in the loading area just now. I was having a chat with one of the others when I heard a commotion and ran in there to find Wilkins dead. Poor bloke. 
Killed by that filthy little bastard that we feed and pay. I don't smoke. Never did. I should be forming here. Wilkins coddled the boys like a mother hen. He come along and stops me giving the boys a beating. That was much more difficult than it initially appeared. Well done. I'm up to the click with you. Tragedy in the park. Another chance to sort out a diabolical conundrum. One that I'll turn into a one a penny read for Perlock Publishing. I should reinterrogate a suspect. I believe I should reinterrogate a suspect. I believe I should reinterrogate a suspect.
Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. I'm sorry to hear about her murder. She was a patient here, but increasingly began to stop by socially. Dr. Alton makes house calls to see him. Baxter doesn't come into the office. I make up the prescriptions and he picks them up at noon when I'm away at lunch. So she was meeting Dr. Alton in the park, was she? My understanding was that she was engaged to someone. In any case, the good doctor could do better in my opinion. Perhaps now he will. I don't know any of Dr. Alton's other patients. I'm quite angry, actually. I was having such terrific results. I felt like a new man. Much more vigorous and outgoing. But the doctor has ended the prescription altogether for no reason. Oh my god, Prudence! How horrible! I was about to propose. But I don't understand. She and I didn't have a meeting arranged today. It is true that we sometimes meet in the park, but there was no arrangement for this morning. That's very odd indeed. Prudence was a patient here, but wasn't given this prescription. There's no reason that she should be carrying such a packet. You appreciate, I'm sure, that I cannot discuss the condition of any of my patients. An unfortunate incident. One of my patients became overexcited. apparently attacked the doctor yesterday. It was after hours, but the doctor did have a cut on his cheek. Poor man. Prudence and I are engaged to be married. I'm desperate to see her. She should be by any moment. She had something important to tell me. I'm worried she's going to break off the engagement. Prudence has been so distant lately. I believe she has a misplaced affection for her doctor, the cat. I would make a much more appropriate husband, and the wedding is planned.
I saw her kissing my man in the park, didn't I? I followed her to the street yesterday, but lost her. I'll come every day if need be, until I catch her again. That trollop better promise to let him alone, or I'll give her what for. He's all mine, I tell you. All the girls want a bit of Baxter, but they can't have him. You ask him yourself. He lives just that way. Oh, God, it's true. Oh, I couldn't help myself. The power unleashed a creature within me. He seduced the innocent Prudence and then killed her to prevent us from marrying. It's too, too horrible. I knew something was amiss with the medical powder, but didn't understand until you found those papers. Well done. Up to the cliff with you. Death surrounds thee both. Get thee behind me! <laughs> Alas, these days stupidity is all too prevalent. You know, I never asked your names when we last met. I'm Evie Fry, and this is my brother Jacob. Tell me, do you believe in ghosts? Not particularly. Yes. I'm skeptical myself. Here we are, in the world's most advanced city, yet its citizens are so enthralled to the supernatural, they leave themselves vulnerable to charlatans, which is why I joined the Ghost Club, the first society in the world to look systematically at the phenomenon. Because truth, like a spirit, must be cajoled before it will reveal itself. Will you join us? Sounds absolutely ridiculous. Why not? It does sound intriguing. Splendid. 
I have your first case. There's been some disturbing reports about a series of assaults in the Lambeth. People claim they're being you now. Claw marks on the walls. I have you now. Warehouse, lots of guards, mass lunatic inside. This is the bloody life. Thank <laughs> you. 
something to remember me by. Oh, you can't talk to me like that, you little guttling. What's all this, then? Oh, sod off! If you'll excuse me, madam. Can you fly? Tell me where the syrup originates. What's that? All, all I know is they make a run each day between the gasometers and the asylum. Find out where that syrup is made, shall we?
some of us have to work for this event, Frank. Rise up and fight! Correct, don't care about you! Scalking sod. The man in charge of the syrup distribution runs a fighting club at the foundry. Syrup, mate. Speak now or forever hold your. The distillery. It's the large building beside the brewery. Now, to stop soothing syrup production once and for all. Keep a sharp eye out, lads. Someone's targeting our network. The distillery might be next. This will complicate things. Right, 
should not go about frightening respectable gentlemen, young man. I didn't realize snooping around was considered gentlemen. Snooping? Sir, I assure you. Keep vigilant. Quick, inside. That was too close a call. You, young man, gave me quite a fright. I thought you were one of them. But I realize now why you're here. Same reason I am, I imagine. I imagine? I believe I found something, young man. Rather impressive contraption, wouldn't you say? I've seen bigger. into the syrup, an opium, no less. Revolting, absolutely sickening. How much do they sell this panacea for? Anyway?
Well done, dear boy. Well done. Charles Darwin, delighted to make your acquaintance. Jacob Fry, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> While you were busy wreaking havoc, I found this. It indicates that a sample of every batch has been sent to Lambeth Asylum. Oh, I wonder if it's visiting hours. Don't be so hasty, Mr. Fry. Many people work at Lambeth. You wouldn't want to attract unwanted attention. Mm. What was the fun in that? Not every problem can be solved by blowing things sky high. Sometimes a little discretion is in order. It's getting late. I will meet you at the asylum to continue our investigation. This could be interesting. There's no shortage of firearms in this neighborhood. I suspect the solution will turn on geometry, timing, and human nature. There may be a penny dreadful in it. Look into it, won't you? Well now, I didn't ask about this. Well now, I didn't ask about this. Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions.
here is a good man. Very honorable. I'm proud to have served under Colonel Prescott in 11th foot Gold Coast, Africa. I was on my way here. Heard two shots I did, right at the stroke of noon. Bullet hole in the clock. <laughs> That's a new one. It could have already been there when I arrived at noon. Or maybe it was the second shot I heard. From what I can gather, Prescott was shot almost exactly at 12 o'clock noon. The young lads across the street were fooling with a pistol they'd found. A bullet must have gone astray through the wooden fence. Hit Mr. Prescott smack in the chest. Bloody unlucky for all concerned. Apparently they put the clock there while doing some repairs. It still runs, I notice. When Colonel Prescott retired from the army, he used his connections and started this munitions factory. He wanted the men that served with him to have work when they left the army. Prescott put that up in memory of the time he led a sortie across the Pearl River to outflank Ashanti warriors. Things turned out badly that day. Horrific. We lost several of our comrades. Prescott wanted us to remember them.
I believe I should reinterrogate a suspect. <sighs> Saw him each morning as I drove by. Seemed like a good sort. We lost an entire barrel of beer, damn it. I heard two loud bangs, but thought nothing of it. Later, I found a bullet hole in a barrel. Imagine that, a bullet hole. My lad Samuel might know more. He's around back, tossing trash in the river. The poor lad. Fell on my doorstep a few years ago. He's in a bad way, has some sort of malady. Rides in the back while I make deliveries. Hard worker, very determined. I just drop off beer. Don't pay much attention to people along the way. There was an hole in a barrel. I've got no explanation for that. That's for some sickness I picked up a while ago. Can't remember the name of it. Him and me like to insult each other. I was a lieutenant under his command in Africa. I love the army. No one questions you when you wear a uniform. Anyways, every morning when he arrived, we'd call out and joke with each other. Uh, yeah. Well, Prescott led a flank and sortie that went wrong. Lots of casualties. Some men called the colonel a coward, but it were really just bad luck. Anyway, he resigned. To make amends, he offered work at his factory whenever one of us left the army. Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. If I admit it, I sell stolen rifles and pistols. All very hush-hush, black market. I made that shot early this morning. Prescott challenged me to plug the 12 from my shot. I missed just slow. No one witnessed it. It was too early in the morning. I brought that gun back from Africa. I was a sniper fighting the Ashanti. I used that gun this morning for Prescott's challenge. It's the only Whitworth we have. I'd never sell it. His goddamn cowardice in Africa got me best friends killed. He should have faced a firing squad. Very good sleuthing on your part. It's a miracle anyone survived what with all those bullets whizzing about.
Jacob, uh, Miss uh, Fry, how good to see you. Oh, have you seen Stalick's latest lies? Lies in a newspaper? What transpired from the new line you're establishing? Oh, the cables we ordered never arrived. And then we intercepted this. A message mentioning cargo seized at College Wharf. Then let's unseize it. Oh, uh, wait. Another intercepted wire contained the recipe for a powerful hallucinogenic serum. I've adapted this dart mechanism to work with your braces. Alec, you're a genius. Well, that patently is untrue. Although I've also discovered that the serum adopts a form of a gas when subjected to heat. Just when I think you can't surpass yourself.
On the docks, lads! We need to get this load to Steric now! Must know what kind. There, Mr. Bell. Every worthwhile endeavor is fraught with dangers, my dear friends. None more so than yours. But you have triumphed once again. How do you know? We have entered the age of communication, remember? We've already received word from Greenwich that the shipment has arrived safely, thanks to you. Have you discovered what else is in that shipment? Indeed. Um, I'm afraid that Starrick's poison has found its way onto the open market. If he believes that will stop us, he is mistaken.
you're you're gonna be shot, sorry. Mr. Owen, you are truly the most insufferable fellow. I I have told you before, sir, I had nothing to do with that anonymous article. Nothing, I say. That is a lie, sir. And you know it. Bah, I don't have time for this nonsense. Nonsense? It is my name and reputation you have willfully besmirched, sir. My very name. Bah! <laughs> drive, damn you, drive! <laughs> that is Richard Owen, a vile, despicable wretch of a man. Really? I could have sworn you were close friends. Mr. Owen works at the asylum. He will know who made the syrup. Get him! Get him! Faster, you Nedwin! Faster! <laughs> yeah! How much of a beating this type of vehicle could take? Is that so hard? days when I've been doing my round, some bampot starts following me. Nervous looking laddie. <laughs> He's up to no good. 
tell you what. Do your rounds as usual. If he appears, I'll keep an eye on him. When we return, put him into the train. Aye. All right. Take care, there's a gang out looking for you. Ugh, not at all. Just one gleek at laddie following me. You certain? Certain as can be. Let's not forget no, where no, no. What are you doing? Block it. There he is, the rascal. Damn pillock. Uh, sorry, but that woman's from an important gang. Gang? What gang's that? I think it's in a train. Sounds like the bastards will be okay, look. Alert the lads on the rooftops. We'll take her out. Proper. 
No, they're dangerous. There might be an ambush in the station. I'm sorry about hurt you. Please, let me live. I must get to the station before Agnes does. <gasps> following Agnes. Nigel! Nigel Bumble! Why were you following us? I, I want to join your gang. Ah, oh, for Christ's sake, he knows who we are now. <laughs> All right, laddie. I can use you to tidy up the train a bit, if you didn't mind getting dirty. Really? Terrific! Uh, you won't regret it, miss. drinking with a gang last night. They ran up against some Templars and killed one. But Nigel was too sozzled to get away. Knew the constables have him up for murder.
this is going to go bad for you. Confess, and you'll save us all some grief. Oh, I didn't do nothing. So help me, Bob. <laughs> Drinks. The next thing I know, they say I burked someone. Oh, Nigel. I had one too many. I lost all my things. They must be scattered all about. Oh, and there's a knife out there, too. Could you get them before the Rosses do? Shut up! He doesn't have a hat. If you find a hat that fits him, that's a death warrant. something oh, oh no nothing Get away! Get down, down! 
murder weapon. Evidence are you holding this man? Why, on, uh, uh, Sergeant? I believe at a minimum you need a body. We can't find a thing, Inspector. You botched another one, Sergeant. Charlie, I suppose the Ghost Club holds some new horror for me today? As a matter of fact, yes. Follow me. Number 50, Barclay Square. Four stories high. There have been many strange tales of this dreadful domicile. The earliest report of a haunting was said to be the specter of a small girl who was murdered by a servant. She could be seen at the attic windows weeping and wringing her little hands in an agony of despair. Come along, another legend claims the attic is haunted by the spirit of a young woman who purportedly threw herself from the top floor windows to escape her abusive life. Her screaming ghost has reportedly been sighted hanging from the window ledge. This residence was briefly owned by a Mr. James Jasper, a choir master and an opium addict. His nephew Edmund was betrothed to one of Mr. Jasper's pupils the fair and delicate Rose. However, Edward disappeared under mysterious circumstances, followed by Jasper himself. Perhaps grief sent him back to the soothing arms of his narcotic mistress. Let's go. Easy does it. Keep moving. Shall we? Though this house is vacant, some say it comes alive at night with screams of terror, ringing bells, and slamming shutters.
Although eerie, this phenomenon is easily produced by pneumatic tubes and valves. There are claims that a young man was caged in the attic. His only connection to the rest of the world, a tiny hole in the door. A young man who was reduced to madness by this extreme isolation. The legends all seem to focus on one room in particular. sudden draft. Nothing more. <laughs> My word. Perhaps, perhaps I shall wait here while you investigate the source of that laughter, which is not at all unsettling. Why were you hanging around that house? What's it to you? Tell me or I'll drag it out of you. Right, right. Over here. We were there for the treasure. We found a key to the secret passage. Well, I hope secret the passage? Yeah, spread. number 50's got a secret passage. Here, take it. Just leave me be. I knew there was trouble. I could feel it coming. I've found a lock, but I haven't located the key. Lucky for you, I've got it. Ha! So this is how it works. How disappointingly dull. for Rosa came near to equaling mine. It should have been enough to keep my beloved nephew away. My poor Ned. Forgive. Alas, the myth has been discredited. There was no ghost in Barclay Square, just a wretched soul driven to murder and madness by guilt and intoxication. I think this is the makings of a rather fine novel. I wonder if I've got one left in me.
Ah, another exciting night home for Evie Fry. Just on my way out, actually. I found the piece of Eden. What's this one going to do, hmm? Heal the sick, deflect bullets, control the populace? They're dangerous objects, Jacob, especially in Templar hands. Oh, you sound exactly like father. If only. Lucy Thorne is expecting a shipment tonight. She's Starek's expert in the occult. I'm nearly certain she is receiving the piece of Eden Sir David Brewster mentioned. Sounds like fun. Mind if I join you? Promise you will stick to the mission. I swear. The contents of that box are worth more than your life and those of your entire family. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Thorne. Uh, careful there! I double the guard on that cart! Now, Miss Thorne, there's the matter of some uh, papers for Mr. Starek. If you'll just come this way. Very well, but make it quick. Whatever it is she's after, it's in that chest. There are gunmen on the rooftops. Can you dispose of them before I reach the cart? I was hoping for a challenge. Did you find it? Actually. There he is! I think it's best we leave. What did you do? It's hardly the time for questions! Whoa!
was fun. Thanks for the invitation. Let's do it again. Damn it. the train for you. Like a paint, new rugs from Camden Loch, and my wee sister, the seamstress, did a discount on the curtains. I would like a seven-inch flywheel, please. Hang on a minute. Damn it. I can't get a blessed thing done around here. Miss Evie! I've done something dreadful! The train won't stop! Keep your flywheel. Business opportunity. Oh.
Check on the driver. at Whitechapel Station. Nigel wants to make up for things, so he got you a gift. Oi, Mr. Fry, come have a look at this. Ain't she a beauty? Oh, well done, Nigel. Yeah, I nicked it off the gang across town, got them all stewed, and then took it when they was asleep. <laughs> Here, sir, let me show you. It's jumped. Oh, shit. Move!
position in the Royal Artillery. Dressing down. You may have not found a piece of Eden, but this material is invaluable. Look. It says the London assassins had found a shroud. The shroud of Eden is supposed to heal even the gravest injury. If the assassins had found something like this, surely father would have known. There must be something we're missing. Something only we can see. These look like directions. Are you coming? Fieldwork is not really my speciality. We found a clue to a precursor object. Don't you want to follow it? Put that way, one can hardly refuse. search the Kenway house. I think this is it. I think you're right. Look. I'll be in the study. I don't want to be interrupted unless you have news of the lost notebook. That makes getting in a challenge. You still intend to enter? If this is a Templar stronghold, it won't get any easier. Don't worry. We'll stay well away from Miss Lucy. Shall we? Can you check over there? Of course. What are we looking for? I'm not quite sure. What are the Templars not seeing? Something only we can. strong sense of spectacle. This is 
incredible. The history of the London Assassins. Vault holes, vaults, a hidden key. This is it. You say you heard music. There was no opening there before. It's closing! Yes, I can see that. Help me block it. We need to find another way out. entire vault filled with assassin history left behind once again we'll just have to reclaim this one later or find a better cachet we oui. i thought you preferred to stay out of field work i i was thinking more of you and your brother i, I shall provide uh, planning assistance from the train jacob's off marauding I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen. Oh, yes. We had the most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starrick's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson. I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me. Where would I find the doctor? As you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ. Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Elitson. Oh, 
I don't care about your ethics. And I care even less about your damn patience. Now hand over your keys. What are you doing? Haven't you heard? You're fired. Now bugger off. How to do it. I wouldn't trust the doctors here, especially that Elliotson fellow. What's the matter? Oh, young man, help. I must speak with Miss Nightingale at once. One of the brutes stole my key, and there's no one around. I can't get out of here. Stole your key. Don't go anywhere. I might be able to do something. I wonder why so few patients died this week.
This place gives me the creeps. I'm sorry, sir, but you aren't allowed in here. I'm sorry, sir, but you aren't allowed in here. I'm afraid I must ask you to leave, sir. Authorized personnel only. Please, go away. Here it is, Doctor. We will continue our experiment shortly. In a moment, we will compare the brains of our two specimens. And since both specimens had a propensity towards violent behavior, we should see similar protrusions in specific parts of their brains. Corpses do not have boots. It ends. Yet I can only think of beginnings. A better tomorrow. Forged with the blood of visionaries. All I see is the blood of a lunatic. <laughs> Do you truly believe murdering an old man will stop humanity's great architect? Crawford Sterrick has a glorious design for mankind. Designs are meant to be broken. I hear a child. A child who believes they can solve all the world's woes with a flick of a blade. Have you ever pondered the consequences of your actions, Jacob Fry? Or did your father teach you nothing?
Elliot's an expired, and soothing syrup production has ceased. Outrageous! Fry intends to endanger all of London at the hands of the mob. Or perhaps he doesn't intend much of anything at all. Thank he's you simply content to dice with our lives. The asylum is shut up. Medical care throughout the city is in disarray. He does not, cannot understand the consequences of his actions. The man is clearly an anarchist. Gentlemen. This tea was brought to me from India by a ship and up from the harbor to a factory where it was packaged and ferried by carriage to my door, unpacked in the larder and brought upstairs to me. All by men and women who work for me, who are indebted to me, Crawford Starrick, for their jobs, the time, the very lives they lead. They will work in my factories, and so too shall their children. And you come to me with talk of this Jacob Fry, this insignificant blemish who calls himself assassin? You disrespect the very city that works day and night so that we may drink this, this miracle, this tea. I'm nearing the end of my research. Our beloved London shall not suffer such a bothersome fool for much longer. And what of this sister I've heard of? Miss Fry. Miss Fry shall be gutted. Soon enough. Delicious. Sorry to interrupt, Initiate. Thought you'd like to know that Sean and Rebecca got away from Odsoberg. Berg runs a unit called Sigma Team. Violet DaCosta is his tech support. They've been hunting and killing assassins for a long time. Thank God you're all right. Oh, tish tosh. It'll take more than a Templar super soldier to end the glorious saga of Sean Danger Hastings. I was talking to Rebecca. Right. Anyway, Berg's presence confirms it. The Peace of Eden is in London. The Initiate's data sync suggests it's the Shroud. The Templars seem to want it pretty bad all of a sudden. They must know something we don't. The only thing we know is that we can't go up against Sigma Team alone. Leave that to me. In the meantime, keep a low profile. Let the Initiate continue to sync the data. Owning the railway wasn't enough. Now Starrick has bought an omnibus company as well. I suppose he wants to control the neighborhood's workers and keep them under his thumb. Pearl Attaway is Starrick's competitor, is she? Perhaps it's time I went into business. And Miss Fry, what are your plans? I studied the history we recovered from the Kenway Mansion's hidden room. I'm off to a certain monument. They turn up! For the last time, move on or else. You cannot frighten me. Listen to me. I have been ordered to keep your rallies off the streets. No, you must listen to me. The people in this city are in dire need of your assistance. Oh, you are Jacob Fry, are you not? And Miss Fry. We're at a disadvantage, sir. Karl Marx, much like you, I am an activist of sorts. You've got the look of a man who wants something. Indeed. You've done more for London citizens lately than any endeavor has accomplished in a decade. But those citizens were already well provided for. I challenge you both to help those who really need your assistance, the working people. An interesting challenge. We accept. Shouldn't we at least talk about these things for... Sod it. We accept. I am organizing a discreet meeting with some like-minded friends to discuss trades unions. A 
Alas, the police seem to have noticed my activities. They've stuck to me like flies on Scheiser. In any case, I need you to help me get to the meeting without the interference of the police. I'll be there. You know, I had similar problems with the police in Paris. Well, Paris and Brussels. And also, perhaps, Cologne. Our next worthy ally awaits us in a nearby pub. Onwards! No doubt the police already have agents stationed within. I'll wait here until the coast is clear. Take him out. I'm with you. Let's build the blood. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Oh, you are, Mr. Marks, sir. Oh. Oh. 
Don't kill me! Someone's kicked the bucket. Don't look inside south now, are you? Come on, let us go now. Work here is complete. Come, let's slip away and get to the meeting. I do appreciate your assistance in this matter. Good God! Only when workers are able to assemble freely and in strength will we be able to achieve the reforms we most assuredly deserve. Might I trouble you to stay nearby until the meeting is over? I fear we may yet meet with some mischief. Don't you worry. It seems the movement is ever doomed to be betrayed from within. Save me! Will you fetch the gentleman back here? I would look him in the eye and ask why he oh. went down with the letter. Get him. On your own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Are you mad? Oh, that's oh, fucking bad. Save me! You're you. making a big mistake. Well, no more fun games for you, eh? What's all the rockets? What's going on? What's happening? Looks like bother to me. to do this thing. Has the party not taken care of you? Guthrie, the mill say, any man what joins a union will be put out of work come sun up. How long will the party feed my family for? If we do not stand together, we are lost. My heart is broken, Simon. Please, God. I thank you, my friend. I hope you will continue to aid the struggle when the opportunity presents itself. You seem tired, friend. Everything all right? No rest for the wicked, Charlie. Today's Ghost Club investigation involves a carriage. It's said to be covered with gold leaf, dazzling passers-by when the sun shines. Naturally, it's rumored to be haunted. Now let's see if we can find it. Oh, that actually looks remarkably comfortable. I presume this was once used to carry the mail. What the devil? Yeah! 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 Yeah!
you climb down and sit beside me so that I might see your face? Miss? Where are you? You look as though you're just about to collapse. What on earth has happened? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. That away. Yes, may I? Oh, splendid. You're here to murder me. I what? No matter. Everyone has a prize. Is this enough? I'm not here to kill you. And what's your game? Mr. Starrick and the Milner Company have blocked your ambitions long enough. I have a business proposition for you. Wonderful. Come with me. We have much to discuss, Mr. Jacob Fry. At your service. Truer words were never spoken.
If you'd be so kind as to take the reins. You must understand I've received threats against my life. Malcolm Miller has all but waged war on me since Mr. Stark brought out his company. And no offense, I hope, but you do look the cute. I doubt I shall ever recover from such a slight. What then is your interest in my redemption, Mr. Fry? I sense an opportunity that will benefit us both. Do you? Is that so hard to believe? Whatever your intentions, it will be quite the tonic to strike back against Milner and Starrick. I have worked like a troop to make it. That's one of Milner's. a girl. Malcolm Milner, Starrick's puppet himself. Careful, you twats! This park scene needs to make it to the Outway Depot. He thinks he can burn my buses. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Let's give him the whole damn bottle. <laughs> we'll turn Milner's park scene against him. But I'll need help from my gang. Such entrepreneurial instinct, Mr. Fry. I shall leave you to it. Don't be afraid to spill a little blood. I go. I don't know what happened to the driver. I just passed him on to Milner. That was a week ago. Milner wouldn't be Jacob. Primed and ready. Already, you're hired. 
though I have more business planned for us both. Drop a note to my secretary to make an appointment, and I shall reveal the next step in our scheme. I don't actually work. Like that. Time to explain. the way.
Walk on, girl. Saved? Are you daft? What about the reports? Your masters won't be happy if their accounts go up in smoke. Mother of God, you're right. Follow me, quickly. You, stop. I don't want to hear it. should be just inside here. Oh, there they are. Good. They're safe. Oi! What do you think you're doing? Stop, thief! Mr. Fry, I told you to make an appointment. My schedule was open. You're fortunate I like you. <laughs> Internal combustion engines. Eight small syllables that mean a great deal of money. The engines will be delivered to Milner by train. Secure them for me, and he will be devastated. Mm. I'll need a second train to pull this off. And I think I know just the man. So we have a deal, Mr. Fry? You're fortunate I like you, Miss Attaway. Steady on.
do you want, Fry? What makes you so sure I want something? Perhaps I saved you out of the kindness of my own heart. <laughs> Come on, let me tell you about the job. Miller's pulling a lot of cargo there. Just be sure to make the transfer. Give him help. Internal combustion engine. The end of horse-drawn transport. <laughs> it's like gazing into the future. And what is the going rate for the future, do you think? Uh, we're not selling them. You're giving them to your contact? You'll be paid all the same. Who is this Pearl, anyway? How long have you been working with her? She's a business partner. That's all you need to know. make it too, laddie da. Slap some gold leaf here and there. I gave the wood a splash of shellac. I've holstered the lot. I should not 
And how do you like the lampshades? Miss Fry, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Clara. I was just going to check on Lambeth since the asylum's closing. What brings you here? The children in my care have been fallen ill. Our usual tonics aren't working. I came to... <laughs> Are you certain you're feeling all right? Of course. I am, Miss. Clara! Is there a doctor nearby? Bring her inside. She simply collapsed? Yes, she said the others took tonic, but it didn't work. I should think not. Ever since Elliotson was murdered, the district has been overrun with counterfeit tonics. <laughs> this one needs proper care. But without the appropriate medication, she and the others will quickly decline. What do you need? I need supplies. Plenty of them. And medicine. Some of the less common ingredients are being stolen and sold at auction. I'd be happy to help. Here's the list. Miss Fry. Evie Fry. I'm Miss Nightingale. How do you do? Please hurry. We don't have much time. London.
I can't thank you enough. These supplies are meant for Miss Nightingale. I'm here to collect them. And they're already loaded on the cart. Please take them. Get up! You mean that cart? Yes. Of course it is. Please be careful. Some of those items are fragile. Not a moment too soon. I hope you brought the medication I requested. How is she? She will recover. Pablonelli, the children. Thanks to you, we can distribute authentic medicine now. But is that a permanent solution? I will petition to have regulations put in place. Lambeth is in your debt. It takes a long time to change things. But I'm not going anywhere, Miss Fry. Jacob, Evie, it's you. Thank goodness. Experimenting, are we, Alec? Correct. And looking a bit frazzled. Nerves. It's those great oafs Starrett keeps sending round to coax me. He is offering a ridiculous amount of money. Alec, you're not thinking of jumping ship, are you? Never. I've been working in something in case they get too insistent. Uh, it's meant to stun an assailant, should they need a rise. Are you certain that it works? Uh, not as such. I've made three of them with varying degrees of acidity and whatnot. Oh, one must be the right formula. Let's find some Staric lackeys to target then, shall we? <laughs> Speaking of Staric, he is still transmitting false information. We could simply destroy his transmitters. His company's too well guarded. And the bombs will help, but it would be awkward to produce bombs that potentially do not stun. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like opportunity has come knocking. Oh, dear. You never looked so angry before. Stand clear, Alec. Let us instead play a little linguistic game with them. Um, take the bombs and climb onto the roof. Uh, when I see the name of uh, a fruit, toss one near the thugs. Right then. Oh, uh, oh wait, uh, I nearly forgot. Um, 
Slip these into your boots, and you will henceforth be immune to all voltaic discharge. I think. Gentlemen, oh, I, I would ask you in for tea, but I'm afraid I'm running rather late. Enough of the nice teas. We've come to smash your place up, ain't we, Bess? You got one of them telling what's it's in here, ain't ya? You? You've been reading messages from the Steric Company. That is as untrue as the notion that the Steric Telegraph Company is emitting impartial information, sir. Come again? Your employer's promises are nothing but hot air. His operations are about to turn pear shaped. Tickle him till his sides start splitting. What you going on about air and pears for? Oh, I don't know. If you're rough. Me. And to think I worried you had the mental agility of a dollar of donkey's apples. where you keep that telly what's it or count to three three well well let's see how far you get one do you really think i would keep it here do you see a cable a telegraph without a cable is about as useful as a bell without a clapper i'll give you a bleeding clapper well bless my boots you're as purple as a plum <laughs> And let's sort out Starek's propaganda machine, shall we? Come on, we haven't got all day. The longer we can keep Starek from spewing out false information, the more we can awaken the people with the truth about his operations. Let's get to it, then. Would you believe my mother says there are still some wives in her street that swear by that shooting stuff? So I took it upon myself to tell her neighbors the truth about the obnoxious draft. Good on you, Alec. But you can't go knocking on everyone's door. No, I wasn't always welcome. It shows how false information can be as difficult to stamp out as fish wives' profanities at Billingsgate. <laughs> <laughs> or rats in the sewers. But if we can eradicate the source that continually feeds such detrimental trash, then little by little the truth will take the upper hand and the sham will be flushed out. Let's crack on, then. 
Here we are. We will have to get out if they've been detected late. Well, I stunned them. You sneak inside. I shall destroy not one, but three parts of the transmitter. You'd be as good as dancing before a public toilet without a penny. to the next part, Alec. I see. This is becoming rather perilous, to say the least. Once again, an order for supporting what is most dear to me and to our cause, freedom of speech. It's a blessing that you employ your genius for the common good, Alec. However, I suggest you vacate your workshop. No need. Not now you've given me sacks full of courage. And besides, what with my little devices, I have all the protection I need. Uh, should you find yourselves with a moment to spare, do drop by. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Jacob, darling, do join me. To our fruitful partnership. And to the shiny new engines now in my possession. Back to business. Milne has fled to the Thames, occupied with securing his ferry. It's all he has left. Hmm, protected it with his life, no doubt. The very thing I want you to take. <laughs> Just kill him. That's not your first glass of champagne, is it? Success is more intoxicating than alcohol, Mr. Fry. Then save a glass for me. Now, what would it take to draw out Starrick's pawn? 
the sight of his fairies in flames, perhaps. to sink Milner's enterprise.
I knew this day would come. Mr. Starrick was furious I lost the engines. So this is my comeuppance. Pearl Attaway led me to you, not Starrick. Then they were gonna gather again. I should never have come between Mr. Starrick and Miss Attaway. Family always stay together in the end. What do you mean, their family? Time for Pearl and I to have a real conversation. Don't let him breathe! I was certain he knew that I belonged to the Order and was there to end me. Imagine my delight when he told me his true purpose. An assassin helping the Templar cause. Isn't that delicious? It's sick. It's business, cousin. Look at the big picture. With Milner gone, I own the only... You glower too much, cousin. You will get your engines back. Our new motorized buses will bring us both... A lot of money. I'll need to arrange proper transport for the engines to get back to my factory. I want you at Waterloo, personally, to ensure that nothing goes wrong. Of course. May the Father of Understanding guide us. Today and in all of our future endeavors, cousin. Waterloo Station. Doors jammed. Again? Just give it a shove. Someone take care of him! Up there.
would like to thank our esteemed guests. So the hints you found in the Kenway House lead to the monument. What a wonderful use of your time. Follow me around asking obvious questions. Well, since Henry isn't here, I thought you might enjoy the company. I don't require any company. And Mr. Green is following up on some leads of his own. Oh, yes, Mr. Green. That's a fascinating idea. Oh, please, Mr. Green, come and take a look at this book and stand oh so close to me, Mr. Green. I do not. Well, perhaps you have nothing better to do, but I'm busy protecting the assassins. Are you really? What was it Father used to say? Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. Precisely. Anyway, I'm off. If I find any more wild geese for you to chase, I'll be in touch. Be ever more pleasant for your absence. This looks familiar.
It's in the very top. The key to the vault, and the shroud. Good day, Miss Fry. I'll take that. You want the shroud to cement your own power. But what if you cannot control it? And why do you want the shroud? Merely to keep the Templars from having it. How like an assassin. To hold the power of eternal life, and yet be too afraid to use it. Eternal life? Is that what you think the Shroud offers? What I think is no longer your concern. <laughs> The engine's just pulled into Waterloo. Once Stark's men arrive, they're gonna unload the train. Well, not if the train has already left. Assemble a team at Charing Cross. I'll send the engines there for you to recover. Central station's closed. Attaway's orders. You saw these blueprints, did you not? Were you aware of this floor? It's only a minor weakness, sir. The final wagon's otherwise fortified. <laughs> Come. You on your way 
to the central station. My colleagues should be here shortly with the schedule for the central station. We thank you for your patience. Wouldn't take much to lead a few of these josses astray. What a shame. Good partnerships are hard to come by. Ours is most certainly dissolved. It's business, Mr. Fry. One does what one must to come out on top. Crawford will not take the news of my death lightly. He can be unpleasant when he's cross. I have sacrificed so much. I don't want to lose my buses.
When coldness or deceit shall slight the beauty now they prize and deem it but a faded light which beams within your eyes when hollow hearts must wear a mask mr steric i told you not to disturb me To break your own to see In such a moment I but ask That you remember me That you remember me Crawford A luster, stripped by the hands of that savage. He must be brought to justice. Pearl would not want justice. Pearl would want vengeance. Your passion is most welcome, Miss Thorne. But we cannot let our emotions disrupt the lawful structures of society. If we do that, the enemy wins. It shall happen in the shadows. Miss Fry will hang from the gallows, and I will flay her brother as he comes to save her. I suppose it must be done. Take no chances. Increase the Templar presence in London. We alone protect this city of light. Yes, Crawford. And then... We shall enter the vault and cast aside the shadows together. A letter? For me? What have we here? Boiler, this dredge character's meddling will be the death of us. He was loitering around the exchange today, asking far too many questions about the bank. Should he discover my plan, you will face a far worse fate than losing your job. Signed, Plutus. So this Plutus is Starek's banker, hmm? I wager dredge will lead me to him. While you're out and about, do attempt not to destroy modern medicine or the London Transportation Network. Don't make me laugh. Innocent lives hang in the balance. They depend on this city. I'm not the one who let Lucy Thorne walk away. A mistake I intend to rectify immediately. A single bus for you criminals. Well, you'll do as we say, Bailey. Or we're gonna have to pay you and your family a visit. You leave them be.
it. Blighters after you. The city's been turned upside down since Attaway Transport and the Milner Company went belly up. With no one to fill their shoes, the gangs made their move. Well done, Jacob. As is Bailey, the only omnibus builder in the city, they are demanding that I work for them. Atta go. Well then. Thank you. Follow my lead at all times. How's this grab you? Thanks. Ah. I sent Ross men a message. You and your family are safe. Oh, you are Absolutely brilliant. The founding members of the London General Omnibus Company. Good, moral men. All of them. We'll have buses rolling before you know it. Thank you, Miss Fry. My pleasure. Ah, 
This is one that's most promising. An important detective is missing. Skullduggery is surely afoot. Solve it, and I'll write it up quick as you please. He's a friend of mine. The whole station is out looking for him as we speak. Ironically, he came here on an investigation himself. Seems several people have gone missing in this part of town. We've had reports of missing people over the last few months. Detective Murphy is just the most recent and the only one who's anybody to speak of. I should reinterrogate a suspect. into the barber shop when I was on my way to work. In this kind of neighborhood, people come and go. An odd man indeed. He spent a fair amount of time in here, poking around. Some people around town just seem to vanish. It is mysterious. George delivers that to us. It's amazing. The flowers just grow and grow. Sweet boy, constantly giving my assistant gifts, a jacket, a handbag, and so on. George is my sweetheart. I think he plans to propose marriage soon. Maybe even today. Someone could tell me more about this. He was in here asking about missing people, but a meat pie he did. Stephen chatted for a few minutes, then headed off to the barber. I'm told that some people have gone missing, but I don't know anything about it. George delivers meat for my pies. Lovely lad. I pay on delivery. I believe he picks it up from a local butcher shop. nosing around. I told him to sod off. I pride myself on the quality of the beef I sell. Somebody selling cheap around here, though, my sales have dropped off. George? I don't know any George.
He came in asking lots of questions. I believe I answered them to his satisfaction. What the devil do you think? I suppose there are a few people I haven't seen in a while. Why would you want to know about him? I'll call the Stupid police. Stupid boy. What the devil do you think you're doing? He does Bulge deliver tan leather on occasion, but I really have Just very little to do with him. Go at once. I should return and find out about this. Yeah, I gave him a trim. He asked no end of questions. When I cut his hair, I notices a tattoo right at the base of his neck. A green Celtic cross, it was. You're right. Several people have disappeared over the past months. Some of them were customers of mine. I'm trying to quit drinking. Sometimes my hand shakes when I'm given a shave. George was in here earlier, getting an haircut. He wanted to look nice for his girl. He's been seeing Joanna from the flower shop for some time now. Said he's finally saved up enough money to pop a question. was coming too close to figuring out where all those people went. <laughs> they got parceled out to the baker, the florist, and me. You very cleverly puzzled that one out. A very unpleasant crime. Perfect for one of Mr. Raymond's penny dreadfuls.
feud ends in blood. I'll take one. Here you go. Sir. I say we stop this goodwill towards strangers nonsense and focus on what London really needs. Solid leadership whose hard work will raise everyone up to success. As go the titans of business, so goes the world. Oh, oi! You weak fool. Get a job! The best guards money can buy won't do Mr. Dredge any good. That's a wrong tree, sir. Now, wait a minute. I know that voice. Fry. Is that you? Fry! Steady on. Jacob, it's me, Sergeant Frederick Appeline. Freddy. Sergeant, undercover. There's to be a robbery at the Bank of England, I'm sure of it. Robbery? It's a fortress. Mm, the boys at the station thought I was joking. Wouldn't be so funny if it was their life savings. Who's behind it? That's confidential. Oh, come on, Freddy. I can help you. Imagine the headlines. Thieves caught in the act. Abeline Wright all along. Well, I suppose I can fill you in a little. Every fiscal quarter, a branch of the bank is robbed. Never the same branch. The thieves are supplied by... Cockham merchants. Thanks for the info, Freddy. It's Sergeant! I, 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 I'm keeping my eye on you! shipment it was. Then I could trace the weapons to their owner. Capital idea, Freddy. Here we are, the shipping docks. Now, where are the Cockham crates intended for Mr. Plutus? Better be the last of him. I couldn't have to have a cup. I've seen all of two crates. Get off! 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 Get Oh! <laughs> 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 
tea. Maybe later. to wait for the crates to be retrieved. Don't want them tea leaves turned to dust, do we? We take these crates. Any mistake will cost you dearly. Keep your knickers on. We hear you. Good, because I ain't repeating myself. It's a shame I can't stop in for a pint. I bet Greenie's tailing Evie right about now. Good luck. Ah, yes, lead me to Mr. Plutus. 
The weapons are here. Same routine as before. The two penny opens a vault, we robs it and leaves the money in his storehouse. Look sharp, the boys are waiting. To the Bank of England. Yeah. Plutus is too... <laughs> My poor friend, Frank Morris. His son dropped dead of exhaustion after finishing an 18-hour shift. Frank is consumed by grief. He blames the government for refusing to protect the rights of the worker. I can't blame him for his rage, but I fear his actions have gone too far. He plans to steal a shipment of nitroglycerin and use it to attack the Houses of Parliament. Killing people and destroying property solves nothing. Democracy is the only road to socialism. Please, stop him before he gets himself or anyone else killed. I expect he's on his way into the city of London now. Perfect. Best deal with this before Morris shows up. What in hell? Who are you? Mark sent me. Now please, be quiet. You tell Mark that I don't need his help, or yours. Whoa, now. <laughs> what do you expect me to do? Even a dog will fight if Kit wants too often. Right. That's a 
People who don't like you stealing their toys. We're trapped in here unless you ascend. Get your bloody hands off me! They got the nitro back. That must please you. Not even close. You knew where to find that cart. You must have been tracking shipments for weeks. Tell me where that supply was headed. I might be able to assist you. Find me in Southwark when you're ready. They're moving the shipment, but we must go now. There's a carriage on the next corner. If we hide within, they'll drive us right to it. I'll hide inside it. You're going home. Home? Back to a cold and cheerless house where I'll wear black gloves and sport a weed on my hat for a year. Then I'll return to the factory like... These ones get to live. At least until they drive me to this factory.
I'm sorry, but my need is greater than you know. Justice will be done. Wait, don't... Morris! Poor sod. All right. Let's smash these crates before anyone else gets any bright ideas. I was afraid it would come to this. He was a good man, but even the best of us can lose our way when blinded by grief. Still, I thank you for preventing a greater tragedy. I'm so relieved to have found you. I fear my upcoming meeting is going to be disrupted. Strike breakers, maybe, or police spies. Yeah, girl. Ruffians who fear the march of progress. Huh. So I'm bodyguarding then. Marvelous. I worry that any agitation will incite terrible violence. So please remove troublemakers without attracting any attention. Wunderbar. Thank you. I must prepare, but I will see you inside shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, United Workers! The man we're here to see needs no introduction, but I shall give him one anyway. He has sacrificed so much in the hope that we may all benefit. Please give a warm reception for Mr. Mark Marks. Is that a pistol? It's too late! That's the last mistake you'll ever make! Increase in exports and imports. While these are facts to be celebrated, but for the workers, very little has changed. You well know under what conditions of shadow and health. Increase of wealth and power was 
Stay here. I'll do it. They can never be easy, can they? Service for the workers of London. I'm confident the reforms we seek cannot be far over the mm. horizon. I don't suppose you'd formally join the workers' party. Mm. I'm not much for politics. <laughs> He's not much for anything that requires deep thought. Does that mean you'll join, Comrade Evie? I'm afraid I have other responsibilities. Honorary memberships, perhaps. You don't give up, do you? We seem to have that in common. Auf Wiedersehen, my friends. Doing fine, girl. Did you see where Bob went, mate? What? Bob? Bob's me chummy. The fellas he was arguing with left right after he did. I'm looking for Bob the Apprentice. Yeah, I seen him. Looked like he was about to vomit. I told him to get out of it. He went to throw up in the alley. Get past me! 
wonder what that's all about. Oh, bloody hell. Has followed him. It appears that Bob broke his pocket watch, or somebody broke it for him. Try counting instead of looking. What sort of fighting about? Blood. This doesn't look sunny for Bob. Slit his throat, Tim. Do it slow. Don't try and get away from me! He won't work! <laughs> Come along, Bob. You want it back at the train. My legs go wrong. Well, that's just lovely. Come on, then. Silence, and I might let you live. <laughs> Looks like a bee. I could certainly use one. What's that then? I work for the assassins. Shh, it's a secret. Right in there, Mr. Fry. Something's happening. Such wild fantasies you have, Bob. That's it, girl. are the least of your problems. Show him what you're made of! 
Let's take a little jaunt to the hospital. Shall we? Like a pig. Here, I'll stitch you up. I'll be needing something to numb the pain. Aye. Oh, I'll get my whiskey. Could you make a gin? Here's an especially exciting one. Perfect for a penny dreadful. A famous professor dies twice. That's once more than usual. Twice as many sales. My name will soon be known across the nation. I should reinterrogate a suspect. Well, now, I didn't ask about this. I should go back and ask about this.
It's unthinkable. Such a great man. We were still in mourning from the burial. He was buried yesterday in the family plot. My father was an eminent anthropologist and something of an explorer. He made his name by investigating the practices of a small village in the Congo. His colleagues at the university often sent him trinkets from abroad. This is no time to talk about the will. It is true that my father and my fiancé didn't get on, but I'm confident that once he got to know her as a daughter-in-law, they would have become friends. It's so very awful. The professor died of an art attack just days ago. Then tonight, I hear pounding at the door. I open it to find him bleeding and in pain. He tried to say something, then collapsed dead. Again. He kept repeating, bar queso, bar queso, over and over. What does it mean? Spider? Let's get that out of here. Emmett is definitely afraid of spiders. He got that a few days ago. Inside was a statue. I thought it was a marvel. But he told me it was quite common. I don't know who sent it. I believe I should pay a return visit to someone. I should return and find out about this. He showed up again. First time that's happened in 35 years of grave digging. I saw the sun lock the tomb myself. It's plain that seven guineas is a lot for a bloke like me. I'm careful with me pennies and save for a rainy day.
I should return and find out about this. I should go back and ask about this. The anthropological sciences have lost a great mind. He revolutionized the field. It is my fond hope that I may inherit his mantle. Which one is that? Sorry, difficult to read. I've lost my spectacles somewhere. I recently traveled to Africa in order to continue studies on the indigenous tribe Professor Bing discovered some time ago. An eminent colleague. He wrote prolifically. Probably no one will ever amass the amount of knowledge he acquired. I'm most vexed about that. A rare specimen of the sort I've been studying for years. It escaped a few days ago, no doubt due to that scatterbrained assistant Virginia. My thesis subject. My South American colleagues tell me that this particular arachnid is only found in the Bolivian Andes. Fascinating subject. A lovely man, and quite wealthy. I only wish he had lived to bless my alliance with his son. I'm sorry to hear about that. Do you know whether that change was actually made? Yes, that's mine. I misplaced a similar one, possibly at the funeral. I was so upset. <coughs> I hoped you wouldn't find that. I'm afraid several of the faculty purchased cadavers for research purposes. It's a fact of university life. snatching that's an insult I'd be in the slammer quick as that if I got caught so I sell a body or two on the side a man's got to eat ain't he 
I broke the lock and left him on a barrel just behind his tomb. It was dark, couldn't really see. But some fella come by and cart the old professor off. It's muddy back there. You can likely still see the tracks. I required his knowledge in order to become the greatest anthropologist in the British Empire. And his beloved tribe of savages provided the method. That Professor Silas was particularly cunning and gruesome. Up Mr. Raymond would be you. thrilled. if you don't know what lock it opens. I dare say Miss Thorne is in the same predicament. Henry! Mr. Green, here, this is it. This matches a casket owned by the Queen, kept in the Tower of London. It's a fortress. I don't suppose you have any friends there? A guardsman? If you can find him once you're inside. I'll talk to you again when I have the shroud. Thank you for your help. Right, yes. Good luck. Evie? Lots of guards. Predictable patrol routes. Thorn may already be inside. Better stick to the shadows.
The shroud is in a chest that matches the key. Find it and bring it to me. Halt! Escort to the keys. Halt! Who comes there? The keys! Whose keys? Queen Victoria's keys. Hers! Queen Victoria's keys! And all's well! You're not with the Royal Guard. How many of you are there? Tell me. Let me go. This is treason. Just you wait until I get out. There'll be hell to pay. I wish they'd just knocked the constable out. <laughs> ah. Is someone out there? Yes. A friend. Oh, that's good. Say, friend, could you get me out? Guards ran off with the keys. the temples well. Thank you. It's treason is what it is, and desecration of the chapel. Miss Thorne told me to be grateful they didn't kill me outright. The nerve. She's after an object of great power. She cannot be allowed to steal it. Not the crown jewels. 
Something much more important. We must stop her. I still have men loyal to me. I'll rally them. Gentlemen, we are facing an enemy we never expected. Traitors in our midst. I could use your help. But this young woman is our ally and she knows their methods. Follow her directions as you would my own. Yes, sir. If the constable says so, then it's our duty. Oh, 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 For your help. That's a bit too close there. You have murdered me after all. But what good will that do you? The Shroud isn't here. You sought a tool of healing in order to extend your own power. Not mine. Ours. You are so short-sighted. You'd hoard power and never use it, when we would better the condition of humanity. I hope you never find the Shroud. You have no idea what it truly can do. Tell me then. No. Stop that! <laughs> 
take this down. Then I want it sealed until you receive further orders. Miss Thorne. You supplied me with the means to secure London's future. The city thanks you. The order thanks you. I thank you. But the shroud can only be worn by one. Therefore, I hereby dissolve this partnership. I promise to endow you with an income into your old age. But that is the most I can do. May the father of understanding guide you. Yes, what is it? Miss Thorne, sir. What of her? I'm sorry, sir. She is dead. And the key? Where is the key? There was no key found on her body, sir. Even if I have to raise hellfire to do it. Burn the letter. What say you? You're not gonna like it. Now, see here. I am graced with the Abilene family's robust constitution. Two pennies robbing the Bank of England. <laughs> the governor of the bank. I think I might need to sit down. There's no time for that. Bastard's probably deep in the vault by now. However you get in, I don't want to know. Of course. But do you know how I can get in? The bank is designed to protect England's gold reserves. A fortress, guarded under lock and key. There is the bank manager, Mr. Osborne. Only he is allowed free access to the vault. You can spot him near the entrance. In oh, yes. One man keeps a close watch on the vault door. He watches it like a hawk. If he sees you, he's sure to seal it. The guard captain, Gus Howard, knows Tupiny well. He is in on this, I'm certain. Mr. Fry, please use discretion. The only way to implicate Tupiny is to catch him in the act. Do not jeopardize him. No big displays. This is the Bank of England. If you encounter any trouble, I'll be in the atrium. In disguise. Tupiny won't be leaving that vault. Fancy. 
two pennies and two. Where is Tupany? Please! I have a family. He's in the vault ogling his priceless paintings. What would you have me do? I rather fancy a private tour of the vault. R right this way, sir. The records are stored in here.
You've stolen your last shilling from the people of London. Those animals squander their savings. We are the experts in investment. Nothing would be built or improved. Nothing would rise above the muck without our hand guiding. No creating the future. They benefit as much as they would. It is their city, not yours. Without our investments, there would be no city. for the path of the dead. Well, for robbing the people oh. of England. The Bank of England is closed until further notice. Currency a laughing stock. Inflation out of control, Tupany brutally murdered. And yet Parliament does nothing. The bill will be defeated, sir. That buffoon Israeli shall be taken care of. It has been arranged, upon my honor. Your honor carries little weight. How dare you, sir! The poor people of this city have suffered enough. Today I granted a significant rise to my staff in order to counter inflation. What? I would supply all of London if I could. Meanwhile, you sit in your club and wax poetic with promises your honor cannot pay. Your family's fortune, however. I wonder what they would offer to keep your record out of the newspapers. About the same as Disraeli would offer for your balls, I wager. But let's be generous. Why limit ourselves to one or the other, when we can have it all? What say you, sir? <laughs> Shall I come collect? No more dallying. The halls of Parliament must be free to govern. Again! Understood? You may see yourself out. A letter for me? Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. May the father, etc., etc., be. So Sterrick's got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. 
Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. They say my money is counterfeit. I'm an honest woman. What has happened? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder. And if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Well, it would certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. It really is very good of you to help. Follow me. Well, if you can call it counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Avalon. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Avalon. You two, You're follow me. Here. I don't wish to be robbed on my way to the cart. The counterfeiters. We live in a civilized society. about the rioting at the bank? They can riot all they want. We won't be giving back those plates. Of course you do. Does it, mate? It's not like he has any real cash on him. Since we've got the printed plates, it's all real cash. Did you hear those crowds? Sounds like all of London is rioting. Nothing to do with us. I can't believe Jacob's managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was right. He acts in haste and repents not at all. Come on, slow down. I wonder what she's up to. Keep your eyes open. Anyone could be trying to get in. Yes, sir.
Keep this place locked down. Why, a gentleman? Yes, sir. Guard this place as you would the Bank of England itself. Absolutely, sir. <laughs> Now to sneak these back into the bank. This could be rather useful.
want you to tell me this. I'm not leaving until I've got answers. There, as if they were never taken. London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me. Again, where are we are going? I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lusiton's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847. The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault. Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry. Miss Fry, Maharaja Dulip Singh. A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick, or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. Surprise. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie? Certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will be back on the train. Be careful. Oh. 
has an intruder! Nothing here. Looks like I have to ask someone where the plans are.
him, miss. I don't know where they've taken him. Taken who? The man, dressed like you. The guards dragged him off. Henry, the plans you stole, where are they? I don't know anything about that. The plans, the mission. some of Clara's children. They took Mr. Henry. We couldn't stop them. I bit one of them oh, good, though. They dragged him off in a red carriage. They won't get far, though. Why were you look like he was about ready to fall off? You can see the cart tracks. Looks so wobbly-like. Cart's been run off the road. They must be driving quickly. Look here, I'll never be able to lift it high enough. We need a winch. Move it, you stupid animal. Knocking people over, too. Help! I need help! And destruction of public property. I must be on the right track. Found you. Now to find Henry. about the carriage, but there's been some strange happenings around here today. All kinds of unsavory types wandering around, armed to the teeth. I don't like it one bit. Why is she arguing like that? Another sad indictment of the state of London. Yeah, I saw them dragging someone out of the carriage after the wheel fell off. They said he'd hit his head. Not sure why they needed to take him to the church. What's she doing here? <laughs> Yes, they pull 
someone out of that carriage. Dead drunk he was. They carried him into the churchyard. Maybe he wanted a quiet place to sleep it off. I'd lock this gate. This is supposed to be locked. Bloody urchins opened it again, no doubt. someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Did they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. Escaping, please. I must find the vault before Starek secures the shroud. We'll talk to the Maharaja again. I will talk to the Maharaja. You will get your head looked at. I'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans. You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green. Oh, 
of a young servant maid. There's been a spate of rather intriguing thefts about town recently. Robberies? In London? I never thought I'd see the day. They look like common robberies at first, but these perpetrators have all claimed to have been under the influence of some supernatural power. I'm not so foolish as to forget that criminals will spin any yarn to avoid the law. However, these thieves all proffer the same defense. They say they were being controlled by a demon. Will you make some inquiries? One of our demon-possessed mobsmen is being held behind bars at this very moment. You may want to begin your search there. What's this one in for? Rob the pawnbrokers <laughs> down the road. A demon made me do it. I can't remember much. That's what's so queer. I've never stolen anything in my life before. Who do you think made you do this? All I can recall is a silver watch swinging in midair. It was held by someone or something. A dark presence whispering. I could only see its eyes. A demon. Maybe the shopkeeper will make more sense. <laughs> May I ask you about the robbery? There's not much to say. Most of the items did come from the same seller, Enzio Capelli, Sorcerer Supreme, the famous showman from Italy. Several weeks ago, he was forced to pawn his family heirlooms, debts. I have the address of the last person who redeemed something of his, a lovely pearl necklace. That helpful? Not again! Stop her! Stop! Somebody stop that thief! You were just indulging in a little light theft. <laughs> it's 
all very hazy, but I remember something silver flashing in front of my eyes. Then I heard a sort of bell. Next thing I know, I'm here with you. Back on track. Now to find this buyer. Let's not be so hasty this time. I wonder what he's up to. Let's go. Doing fine, girl. Easy! Keep moving. Not a ghost, not a demon, but the great Enzio Capelli. You are very much mistaken, aren't you, my child? Yes, yes. Uh, I am very much mistaken. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. You are very much mistaken. And now you are so very, very tired, aren't you? Yes, I'm very, very tired. Now, you're going to do a little job of work for me, aren't you? <laughs> My goodness, what foul behavior. What's going on? Where the devil am I? You've been arrested for theft. How very intriguing. I don't remember a damn thing. Let's get you out of here. I've pulled a few strings, and they won't prosecute on account of your losing your mind. Be free, little chicken.
I didn't know you had a twin sister, Mr. Fry. Evie Fry, sir. It's a pleasure. Usually I would reciprocate the sentiment, Miss Fry, but today I'm afraid nothing will bring me pleasure. What's troubling you, sir? I am used to people challenging my ideas. In fact, I live for it, the cut and thrust of spirited debate. Lately, however, attacks against my reputation have taken a darker turn. Threats of violence against my person and against my colleagues. I do not wish anyone to be hurt because of my research. You help me with steric syrup. I am in your debt. We help each other, sir. My brother and I will make sure that you can continue your work in peace. What do you know of bones? I know how much pressure it takes to shatter, snap, or splinter one. Hmm. Perhaps it would be simpler if I just explained the situation. A few days ago, a German colleague, Dr. Schwartz, sent me a telegram. He informed me he was on his way to London to deliver a very important fossil, you see. In fact, he should arrive at Charing Cross any moment now. Would you ensure no harm comes to him? Mr. Darwin. Just act naturally. Right. So, how is your father? By which I mean my dear brother Frank, with whom I grew up, of course. Oh, splendid! Wonderful to hear! I'll do my best not to call attention to how remiss he was in forgetting to warn me about the delicate situation which brings me here today. Like finding a needle in a hedge. Stay back, Doctor. It is not safe to travel alone. Take me with you. to take this fossil to Darwin.
At last! My heart hasn't stopped pounding. You have it? Wonderful! But where is Dr. Schwartz? Most likely dead, I'm afraid. He never left Germany. At least I managed to get the fossil back. Dear Lord, I should tell you, I was recently approached by men who sought to purchase all my research on the condition I work only for them. Obviously, I refused. Scientific knowledge cannot be bought. It belongs to everyone. Let these villains do their worst. Sorry to be so blunt, but I need to ask a favor of you. A delivery awaits me at the docks, a very rare orchid, all the way from the island of Madagascar. But there is a problem. One of my associates wants the flower for himself. He sent ruffians to collect it, if you can believe that. I need you to collect it for me first.
Thank you, my young friend. Thank you. This little orchid may seem inconsequential, but it holds secrets which could potentially change our very understanding of the world. It would have been a shame to lose it. Shame indeed. Thank you. Young friend, today's papers carry a rebuttal of Mr. Owen's slot. My young friend, today's papers carry a rebuttal of Mr. Owen's slanderous and ignorant remarks about my work. However, I'm feeling quite like a fossil today. Would you be a dear and get me a copy of the newspaper? my life yes now here's a question for you why would you attack a newsboy a man paid me and my mates to force newsboys to display this leaflet yeah take the bloody thing and leave me alone this spells trouble for mr. Darwin not apes. If the circumstances were not so grave, I'd compliment the artist on the wonderful caricature. They are fools if they believe they can stop progress by printing leaflets and killing newsboys. We must find out who is behind this propaganda before more innocents are harmed. Some 
it does not look like, like a monkey. Let's go. What are you doing over there?
Who are you working for? And why are they so... My write-up of that last crime was so ingenious that Perlock Publishing tossed me quite a tidy sum. I believe this next one will do even better. It's baffling. The room was locked. How did the murderer... I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. should reinterrogate a suspect.
I'm just the housekeeper, but Mr. Cashin was a dear friend. Each morning, I bring him his coffee. Today, his door was locked shut. My husband is the caretaker. We live downstairs. We have the keys to all the apartments, so after knocking, I became concerned and let myself in and found him like this. <laughs> the lights weren't working. My husband didn't want to waste any candles, so we retired early. Mr. Cashin is... was a respected music critic. A very accomplished man. about this. I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. is dead? I just saw him yesterday. He looked in the peak of health. If you ask me, he paid a bit too much attention to the caretaker's wife. Scandalous, really. They must have seen each other nearly every day. Last night, I was knitting in that chair. Then I felt quite sickly and opened the window to clear my head. I certainly didn't hear anything. When the lights quit working yesterday, that sweet Mr. Golden handed out candles to everyone. He's such a nice man. Gone just like that, eh? He lived right next door and often came home from his concerts a bit drunk and singing at the top of his lungs. Drove my wife near crazy. Cashin had an eye for the ladies, no question. I was a bit jealous of him, frankly. <laughs> I was down in the cellar fiddling with my experiments. That belongs to Mr. Golden. He's an awfully nice chap. We let him use our apartment during the day when my wife and I are out tending our shop. He likes to rehearse here where the light's better. I'm an amateur chemist. Henman let me set up a few experiments in the cellar. ask about this.
I worked very late. So did he. I only met him once or twice in the two years I've been living here. I was out giving a benefit recital for unemployed musicians. Several dozen people can attest to my whereabouts. I use them to create an ambience when I hold private recitals. Interrogate a suspect. I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. Ask about this. Mr. Cashin's dead. Difficult to believe. He led a quiet life. Out at concerts most nights. Shut up in his room writing the rest of the time. He must have been a lonely man. My wife felt sorry for him and helped him as often as she could. I'm in charge of the running and upkeep of the whole building, so I can get dirty now and then. I was just doing some work in the basement. I forgot to put it away after I fixed Mr. Golden's music stand yesterday morning. I left it there, and he came to give it back. The gas quit working yesterday. I don't know enough to fix such things safely myself. A man from the company is going to come by tomorrow. Yes, be careful with that. It can be dangerous. It reacts badly with heat. <laughs> I never had any problem with the man. What? With my wife? That bastard. I was down in the cellar, fiddling with my experiments. In any case, why on earth would I want to kill that old sod? He destroyed an entire orchestra. All those musicians put out of work. A rancorous old man who had no talent or creativity of his own. I suspect there was more to that mystery than meets the eye. I'm going to look into it. Up to the clink with you! of the events that landed you in a cell? I remember what the other victims remember. A silver watch, the sound of a bell, and a sort of shadow. 
A glint of silver and a tolling bell. I must say, you look very tired. Yes. yes. I am so very, very tired. Now you're going to do a little job of work for me, aren't you? Now I I'm going to do a little job of work for you. You've cost me a bit of money, mate. So I think it's only fair that you replenish my coffers with donations from the good people of London. You will steal money for me, won't you? Yes, I will steal money for you. Good, very good. Now, we can't have criminals like you roaming the streets. You will surrender to the police, won't you? Yes, I will surrender to the police. Oh, and when you do, you're going to do a silly little dance for them. I say, I say you gave me a terrible fright, muttering about a man named Ezio. Enzio Capelli, not a demon but a hypnotist. And he's not even Italian. Mistake, aren't you, my child? 
Yes, I am very much mistaken. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. Very much mistake. Aren't you my child? Yes, I am very much mistaken. Take anything made of silver. Mr. Capelli says I won't remember this. We are look. What was that noise? Go take a look. Italian. It was just for my act. Nobody wanted to see a British hypnotist. Oh, shut up. I'll give you anything you want. I want you to shut your mouth. Do you know a Dr. John Elliotson? Never heard of the man. Did you really think mesmerism would work? How dare you? I'm a hypnotist. Time to confess and free the people under your silly spell.
All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free, sir. This is so like you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, this lady, you are a fool. I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny? Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crown to the bloody Stuarts! How dare sir. Merely because I do not wish to see government placed in the hands of judges, you would make these slanderous accusations? I'll not stand for it! Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. I presume. Pleasure to meet you. B. B. My name's Herbert. Then why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir! Some old bloke paid me to... Smug bastard.
Bloody hell! Where did you come from? Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, uh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lights are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Perfect. So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. of this who the devil are you prime minister i'm your new bodyguard jacob fry i wasn't informed of any new bodyguard who's your commanding officer let the boy speak dizzy <laughs> madam apologies but we've learned of a threat on your life and the met thought it best to move quickly threat what sort of threat <gasps> that sort if you excuse me a moment Not so fast, Your Excellency. Hey! Get back here with that Prime Minister!
Gladstone. That bloody man. He will pay for this. Thank you. What do you intend to do about Gladstone, young man? I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough-and-ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry! Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I am afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. Ha, 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 I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. what the Devil's Acre has to offer.
<laughs> Is your dog quite all right? Oh, Desmond's fine. He's just not over fond of strangers. Or cats. Is a oh what was it? Yes, a costermonger of all things. Remarkable how the working classes occupy themselves, isn't it? Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go? That was the Eucharist. I'm so sorry. I have no earthly idea what you're talking about. <clears throat> Mrs. Disraeli. Everything all right? Oh, yes. I've just learned to whistle. Right. Why, Mr. Fry? I do believe that man is drunk. I expect oh, you're Mr. right, Fry. madam. Look at those two. Uh, I'm going to ask what he's having. Yes, they uh, they seem to be, um... Perhaps you'd let me recommend twice, something Fry. instead. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God bless them. What sort of meat is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company. But another name for it is... Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are. The old one ton. Mm. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? <laughs> Remarkable. <sighs> nice doggy. Mm. Desmond, hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret.
Optimus, thank you for a most energetic and enlightening evening, Mr. Fry. No, thank you, madam. Perhaps now you might tell me about the man in the Hussar's uniform. Quite right. Lord Cardigan is the gentleman you seek. Tiresome. Always blathering on about his military adventures. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens, campaigning against the corrupt practices bill. Perhaps you could catch him in the Palace of Westminster. <laughs> do be careful. The government could ill afford another scam. I assure you, I'll be very discreet. <laughs> Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. The corrupt practices bill is likely to pass. Lord knows Disraeli's played his cut. I just need to get inside. 
No need for this to get messy. All right, all right. Just don't hurt me. Pardon me, gentlemen. Sergeant Freddie Aberline of Scotland Yard. Where might this scandalous activity be taking place? Oh, yes, yes. It's uh, uh, just this way. Follow me, Sergeant, but discreetly, if you would. One doesn't like to be seen airing a fellow member of Parliament's dirty linen. What? <laughs> I'll be very discreet. Usually I would be in disguise, but my clothes all fell into the Thames. One of my favorite disguises is a very ancient old lady, modeled after my mother. You'd be surprised how convincing I am. she was actually had a facial hair problem we'd sell the hair for dolls stage would be folly. Shame! Password. Balaclava. Come in. Ah, Minister Hacker. Uh, one moment. Dashed paperwork will be the death of us, what? Now then. <clears throat> Let's discuss this like Good God! Who the bloody hell- Oh, shut up. should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. And you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen! 
and the eleventh hussars. What a prick. Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend, put himself through hell and he saved us all in the end so i reckon well i can't apologize to him but i can i don't know i can try and live up to his example you are a good assassin holy jeez hello it has been too long galena i mean i have not seen you since we blew up that lab in paris uh, there were many explosions and you screamed like a baby Bishop tells me Otzoberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud. A letter. For me? A dinner invitation. And with whom are you dining this evening? Maxwell Roth. The leader of the Blighters? You're not going. Of course not. Someone help! Stop that thief! Someone help me! <laughs> Please! The devil ran off that way! <laughs> What's happening over there? Thank goodness you're here. Impossible as it may sound, Springheel Jack has returned. 
We need to do something before the unthinkable happens. I thought we'd already dealt with this nonsense. There may be more to this than we originally thought. Thanks to you, the Ghost Club's reputation has grown tremendously. We are a beacon of reason in a world beguiled by superstition. But I believe we have encountered one genuine spirit. 
Can you be certain? That's the question. One might surmise that the spirits that haunt us are simply our deepest fears, manifested as apparitions. Shame. I've always wanted to see a ghost or a goblin. I propose a toast to the Ghost Club and the virtuous twins that have aided it. Miss Evie and Mr. Jacob. Cheers. Cheers. something down there. Looks like foul play. I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. I didn't ask about this. I heard a splash, and right quick pulled this bloke out of the shallows. Dead as a mackerel. I live there now, if you can call it living. I lost my job, didn't I? No need for the likes of me when a machine can do the work. A nice warm coat like that on a dead man? What do you expect? I snatched it before somebody else came along to nick it. Like you. The midnight train. That must be the 616. Stops in the station down the road. If you hurry, it might still be there. Yeah! <laughs> 
Leaving right now. I should go back and ask about this. I should go back and ask about this. Nothing unusual at all. I had a drink with some gents and then retired to my sleeper. Someone slipped a note under my sleeper door a few minutes before midnight. It said I should come to the dining car. I went, but only Ryan and Wolf's man were there, and they were both drunk. The rich fella. I did talk with him. Very charming. But a single woman has to be careful, you know? Did something happen to him? Oh, all right. I flirt with rich blokes, and the barman slips my mickey. I take them back to my sleeper, and they nod off before I have to do anything shameful. They wake up thinking they had a night of fun and hand me a few quid. That's what happened with Mr. Killian, but he was gone when I come back from looking for the man who left the note. You mean the young lady? She and Killian hit it off famously. Embarrassing, really.
Ding was. Some noises on the roof woke me up briefly. You say someone was thrown from up there. You have to be a very strong fella to drag someone up onto the roof. Vivian had another of her dupes in her compartment by then. After that, I remember people going past me from time to time, but I was half asleep. Killian was on this train. Cool. I used to work in his foundry. I never even seen him. None of us workers ever knew what he looked like. That one. Clever little minx. She and the bomb had got a little scam going. I think everyone on the staff knows about it. Go back and ask about this. up in the passenger car. Around midnight, Vivian ran through. She thought someone was looking for her. Just another wealthy passenger. They're all pretty much the same. She rides the train often. She's very friendly with the other passengers. Crushed by a crate, the most hated man in London. Can you imagine achieving such a title? One day my brilliance will bring me similar recognition. Mr. Raymond, what are you talking about? It's of no consequence. What's important is that this man was hated by many, 
But who delivered the fatal blow? I know the man. He's hated by everyone. Surprisingly, it's not clear what killed him. I find multiple wounds. No need to send many people to jail for killing such a terrible man. What say you only arrest the single person who actually caused his death? He appears to have been stabbed with a perforating weapon, perhaps a spike of some kind. There would be bleeding and it would affect motor control right away, but death wouldn't come for another six minutes. I suspect that there is at least one deadly toxin in his system. Well now, I didn't ask about this. Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. The man's a right bastard. I hope he's smoldering in hell. I'm not a crane operator. I wouldn't know how to work that. My best chum is maimed for life, and Ashton didn't care a fig. He deserved what happened. Beyond that, I'm mum. He owned this site and paid us. We all hated him because he looked for any excuse to cheat us out of our wages. I didn't hate him any more or less than my mates. That's around the time I'm given a few minutes to eat something. About then I would have been buying myself an apple at the stand down the street. It's difficult to work properly. You'd have to know what you're doing to drop it at just the right moment. Eddie? Yeah. I taught him how to work the crane a few days ago. He stopped by here every day at the exact same time. He'd buy an apple and try to cheat me out of tuppence. But then most folks do that. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, came by for an apple. He was here when we heard the crate hit the ground. Look at that reprehensible display. He's my husband. Each day I bring him the household expenses just after he eats his apple. I also brought him his invitation to the knighthood ceremony, the one with the special scepter. 
Of course, he wasn't going to take me. I often tie up my hair around a knitting needle. The business is it of yours. I should go back and ask about this. Ashton stops in front of this pub every afternoon to check on business rumors. Something of a bastard, Ashton. Told me he had a bit of jam on the side, if you know what I mean. Wife didn't know about it. Well, the bit of jam wants out, but he won't let her. That's the sort of fellow we're speaking of. That was Ashton's doing. The man had it in for me. He paid workers to wreck my machines. Cost me a fortune. As long as he was around, I'd never prosper. As a matter of fact, I do carry a revolver at all times. It can be a dangerous neighborhood for a wealthy fella such as myself. This proves nothing. Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. He's been coming to me for years. He arrives precisely at one o'clock and leaves two minutes later. He takes a bluish medication every day and prefers that I administer it. Mary is a trusted assistant. As far as I know, she's completely above board. Today, she swept the shop and prepared some medications. She also fetched herself an apple from the apple stand. This really is none of your business. He came to me for his blue medication. I gave him blue medication. I see him here every day. He can be unpleasant, but I don't really know him. Mr. Ashton. I gave him that one when he come by. Mr. Ashton did look strange like. Eyes all yellowish. And then he turned pale after he bit into the apple. Almost green, really. I'll be the toast of the town. A very unpleasant fellow. But what was that business about a knighthood ceremony? In any case, Mr. Raymond will have a story for Perlock Publishing. Up to the clink with you!
Hmm. Better check the back. I'm here to see Mr. Roth. Weapons? No, thank you. I've got my own. You should be on the stage, sir. This way. Has arrived. Come, sit. I've had my eye on you for some time. I find your heroics in battle in the great Crawford Steric quite magnificent. I've been picking off your soldiers one by one. Doesn't that make you angry? On the contrary, surprise is a spice of life. Now, Mr. Steric, that's a different story. I'm drowning in directives, all terribly boring. Let's say we work together and bring him down. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. My friend, if I fail to provide you with the chance to cause Steric some pain, well, you can charge into this theater and kill me yourself. What do you get out of all this? The chance to have a little fun with the bravest man in London. <laughs> you have a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, my carriage. Shall we? This way. Well, you don't expect me to go alone, do you? Doing Take fine. The Driver, to some Pancras. And don't spare the horses. I thought you and Staric would be fighting for the same ends. What happened? Ah, oh, you know. He required my services to train his gang leaders. But the man is dreadful. You don't say. Freedom, Jacob. Stealing that is far more than a sin. It denies us our humanity. Right you are. And St. Pancras will ease our suffering? The station contains a large shipment of explosives to be dispatched to Staric and Co. And you intend to steal it? What? No. I intend to blow it up. There's a train parked inside St. Pancras. Then I'm to do away with Starrick's merchandise, leaving chaos in my wake? Why not, Jacob? Why not? As we speak, the up train is headed towards us. That may help you enter the station unseen. As long as it remains on the tracks. I'd say good luck, but you don't need it. I shall make certain any reinforcements from Steric are kept away from the station.
Watch for the rock boy! Stop and chase me out! Tuna! There! Someday, you blighters will understand that I'm doing this for your own good. <laughs> Two down. Be ashamed to stop now. Where did he come from? Come on! No, 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 no. <laughs> Shipment left. Now to find somebody to drive this hunk of metal. noise. I'll need to keep a low profile. Get your bleeding hands off me! What do you think you're up to? Hush now, please. Do be quiet, sir. No need to make a fuss. What do you want from me? I just need you to keep the engine stoked. All right, I'll help you. Don't hurt me. Think of me as another passenger. 
I just happen to have a rather large blade pointed at your back. so kind as to get up some steam. Apologies, I must run. Do come see me again. Perfect second out in forests. Have you? There's borrowing to be done. Three of Staric's henchmen are about to disappear. Oh, you sly devil. Oh, and I'm coming along this time. There is no sense in giving you all the glory. Off to my carriage we go, Lewis! Fools and hysteric have built their own prisons. It's a dreadful waste. They could be building gangs instead. No, no. Why build when you can ebb and flow like the sea? I would not aim to pin them down. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? What about your bird? It's not building it. I dare say I shall never tire of the National Gallery. Why does Staric interest himself with art? He's hired a fiendishly talented woman, one Hattie Cadwallader, to procure works for him. She has excellent taste. Bring your carriage around and wait for the cargo. I shan't be very long. Someone around here must know Miss Hattie Cadwallader. I'm looking for Miss Hattie Cadwallader. I ain't seen her. I knows what she's been up to, though. And what's that? Friggin' art, sir. She finished a statue not far from here. The statue must be around here somewhere. to me. Now where is that statue? Hey, Smalley. Know anything about what happened here? I saw he 
pinched it, sir. Miss Cadwallader? Shards down the sewers, sir. Sir, may I help you? We can still see you, my son. Of course it's sewers. He's hiding from someone, that's for sure. <laughs> Why the bloody sewers? on its way and tell him too that I've grown tired of these working conditions wasn't Staric who sent me then who Maxwell Roth sent his regards What a pleasant surprise. You'll be hearing from Mr. Starrick, Roth. Ah, I look forward to it. <laughs> really? Why the Alhambra? Every good criminal needs a place to invest his ill-gotten gains. And what's better than distracting the world with a little bit of entertainment while you can see? Oh, come now. You can't tell me you don't enjoy the triumph of a well-received report. The plaudits, the praise, the reviews. I enjoy being entertained. If one of the productions pleases me, I am a... Ah, the... The dwelling place of Starrick's head of security, one Benjamin Raffles. Those who cross him tend to disappear without warning. Sounds like we'll be fast friends. Be careful. His guards are never far away. Oh, blimey! <laughs> <laughs> 
send you. The villain! You have your villains mixed up, Mr. Raffles. The man you work for is the real villain here. My most fragrant Raffles. How very good to see you again. Gano well, Roth. It's into the back with you, then. Who is this Lyris that works for you? Ha! A bit of an odd fish, isn't he? Came to me a few years past. He's very solemn. But always so polite. And he has many other talents. Who am I looking for? Chester Swine. A copper by day and snitch by night. Remove him from the pack and you cut Steric's ties to the police force. Must be good at what he does to keep the charade going for so long. He is indeed, dear boy. Please give me goose flesh. Welcome to Scotland Yard. Must ask you to move along, sir. Now, now, Swineborn. Let's not make a scene. You're not going to get away with this. Oh, but I am. Where are you taking me? A friend would like to say a quick how do you do. Come find me at the Alhambra. I have more amusements planned for us.
This way, my dear. I've something to show you. <laughs> Hop in. Where are we going? One of Starrick's workshops, where they build weapons for his army. When the world is full of nasty things, <laughs> we must tear those things apart. Like Starrick builds a world around his own desires. And so we lose it. Keep moving. In you. you must see the potential, dear Jacob. This workshop is one of Sterics. Set the dynamite and let's blow it to atoms. Together. There.
set. Rigged up. Perfect. Let's put our plan into action. Stand back. Ready. Wait. Whatever for? There are children in there. Jacob, my dear. Starrick uses child labor to manufacture goods. We must put an end to his production line. I cannot like this. Why not? I can do whatever I damn well please. Soon. You will understand what it is to be free, as I am. Light them up, boys! No! What the hell are you doing? We're not playing games anymore, Roth! No. We're not. Gift, sir, from Mr. Roth. You should be warned, Mr. Fry, that when Roth is angry with one, he generally brings suffering to many. My dearest Jacob, alas, it seems our adventures together have come to a close. Although our time together was brief, it's left a lasting mark. I wish you well in all your future endeavors. Cordially, Maxwell. Post scriptum. I'm putting on a show this evening. All of London will be there. Enclosed, please find your invitation.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Alhambra Music Hall. Tonight, we have, for one night only, a very special performance of Corvus the Trickster. While some of the effects may be visceral and highly disturbing, do not be alarmed, my good people. Fear not, this is a purest form of entertainment. Tonight's performance immortalizes and is for the benefit of a young fellow very near and dear to my heart. Any concerns or complaints may be addressed to him. <laughs> Jacob, dear boy, tonight is for you. I'll be serving you this evening, gentlemen. What's doing here, love? Last time, I swear, you nearly poisoned us. Scene two, stand by! Let me out! I need to lower the grip for the show!
Excuse me, love. Just looking for the lavatory. Who's over there? Thanks. What a thrill! Do not fret, my friends. It's all part of the show. Please stay with us as we prepare for the next turn. Oh, my. Are your principles drifting, dear? The flavor intensifies the second time. The hunt now search for want rather than need. If he's not wroth, leaves a strange taste in your mouth, doesn't it? Like eating pork when expecting venison. a daisy, Tom Watchley. Oh, we found a suitably flat-headed gentleman for this one. <laughs> you, you laugh, ladies and gentlemen, but I assure you that is the case. Oh, I have no doubt Show yourself! Enjoy your evening so far, ladies and gentlemen. I know I have. Now, before our final act, I would like to toast all you brave people who joined us tonight to celebrate life and death. Go on, toast them! <laughs> your move, Jacob, my dear. Burn! Burn! baby crow's neck between my thumb and forefinger. Slice to bits the ones you deem innocent. Keep the world in its divine, manic state. For the same reason, I do anything. Why not?
damn this place from hell to Hackney. has bred disorder. The sea rises to flood the pubs and extinguish the street lamps. Our city will die. Tupane has failed. Lucy has failed. Brudenell Elliotson. Pearl. All have gone into the night. It's up to me now. The assassins have brought nature's fury into our homes. Men have become monsters. Barreling toward us, teeth out. Our civilization must survive this onslaught. prevent a return of the Dark Ages. I will start anew. London must be reborn. The Peace of Eden is under Buckingham Palace. We've got all we need. Let's start planning our infiltration. Hold on, better to get visual verification. If we're going to move, we need to be 100% sure. We'll only get one shot before Otso Burr crashes down on us. Gotta agree with Sean. We'll position ourselves near the palace, but we'll wait for you to sync the genetic data before we move. It's all up to you, Initiate. You're late. Staric is making his move. The Peace of Eden is somewhere inside Buckingham Palace. Let him have it. I've seen your handiwork across the city. Perhaps you should trust my judgment. I've been killing Staric's henchmen. What have you been doing? Let's ask Henry, shall we? I have been repairing your mistakes. Too much haste is too little speed. Don't you call father at me. That's Plato. And I am sorry this doesn't involve anything you can destroy. Father was right, he never approved of your methods! Father is dead! Enough! I have just received word from my spies. At the palace ball tonight, Staric plans to steal the Peace of Eden, and then eliminate all the heads of church and state. Once more, for all time's sake. And then we're finished. Agreed. So what's the plan? Such an unexpected delight to visit you both. What is the news on the street? Mrs. Disraeli, we have discovered that there is something inside Buckingham Palace that could threaten the... <laughs> what my sister's failing to say is that we require entrance into the ball tonight. <laughs> Impossible! Even if there were any invitation cards remaining, which there are not, uh, someone of your lowly station... If that damn fool Gladstone is attending this evening, they can have my card. Perfect. Then I'll go alone. Mrs. Disraeli, if you would be kind enough to inform my darling brother of the location of the Gladstone's residence, perhaps he could use his considerable skills. 
to commandeer their carts. <laughs> what fun! Did you hear that, Dizzy? We're going to pinch the Gladstone's invitations. Thank you for volunteering me, sweet sister. Oh, a pleasure, brother, dearest. Now, Mrs. Disraeli, if you would excuse me, I must visit with the Maharaja. It occurs to me that he may have a second set of plans to a certain vault. tonight. They must have taken the invitations with them. You wouldn't happen to have seen two carriages pass by here just now? I did, sir. One with a man in it, the other with a woman. They split up. Where did the man go? That way. Thank you. private party event. Don't mind if I do. Maybe I haven't been quite as delicate as I could have been, but still. <laughs> Steady on. <laughs> Oh, 
Hang on, girl. Mrs. Gladstone's under guard. Better be cautious. Better wait until she's alone. Now is my chance. People can see him. Is he a citizen? I can see his representation. What could be happening? He's not very good. He's a strange one, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> oh, I wonder what that was. Oh, my word. One should not attend the Queen's ball without making a proper entrance. You're not allowed in here. Mr. Jones! Police! Halt! There's no escape unless you can come on! Enough of the invitations. What's this? Swords must be left at the door by order of the Queen. Freddy will know what to do. That's a girl. What a carriage you got there. Where did you buy it, if, if you don't mind me asking? Ask all you want, Freddy. You'll never get an answer. Damn it all. Was it my eyebrows? Yes, and your face, voice and body. Look, I've got an invitation to the Queen's Ball tonight. How did you come by that? Freddy, there's to be an attack on the ball. I need to smuggle some weapons inside to prevent it. Supposing I believe you, only the Royal Guard carries weapons. So? Too easy. 
For God's sake, Freddy. Fine. I require a guard's uniform. Done. I knew you'd come through. Just promise me, Jacob, that you will return Mr. Gladstone's coach. Of course. in the back of my eyelids, Sizzle. I shall return. Charming. Now to hide the body. Go! 
on him! Hit him! Somebody get the fuck! Doing fine, girl. Freddy, here I come. One uniform as requested. It's still warm. My gift to you? I will meet you on the roof of Buckingham Palace. You're such a romantic. Delighted to see you again, Miss Fry. Your Highness, the plans detailing the renovations to Buckingham Palace have gone astray. I suppose you will have to make do with the copies. There are copies? Where? Uh, not so fast. First, I have a matter of some urgency. Carrying out my plan would require stealth and speed, qualities I know you possess. Time is of the essence, Your Highness. Then make this quick, my dear. The most influential men in Parliament remain beyond my reach. But these very men have sent for carriages to prepare for the ball tonight. Acquire an official carriage, and we shall drive the politicians to their destinations. Along the way, I will meet with them. And afterward, I shall tell you where to find the plans. You're a shrewd negotiator. One must be when one is so often underestimated. Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. What a mistake. Yeah. Uh. 
That's it. Slowly now. Faster! Easy. Miss Fry? Climb up, Your Highness. Where are we headed? Belgrave Square. Welcome, sir. Your Highness, what a surprise. <laughs> Is life not about embracing the unexpected? I shall take but a few moments of your time. A matter of utmost importance must be discussed. When the Commonwealth seized the Punjab from my people. It was not a seizure, but a rightful transaction. Britain promised to protect me. By robbing me of my kingdom, Parliament acted in violation of the treaty signed with my family. Here, read it. I... I was not aware. Read. That is all I ask. You are one of the few in a position to help. I will do what I can. Thank you, sir. I trust you and your son will enjoy the ball this evening. He is newly returned from Delhi. I will share what we have discussed. It is most disconcerting. That proved quite valuable. Where to now? St. James's Park. I noticed Mr. Green did not accompany you. He has other things to attend to. Ah, a pity. You two seem to get along nicely. Well, that was a problem, you see. One must not allow our personal feelings to compromise one's mission. That sounds like a quotation. It is. From my father. Ethan Fry. You knew him? No, unfortunately. But Mr. Green spoke of him. He sounded like an extraordinary man. He was, Your Highness. And your mother as well, Cecily Fry. She and your father were partners, inseparable. The only duo that came close to challenging Mr. Starrick. And very much in love, at least from the small amount I have been told. Cecily. I wish I could have met her. From what Mr. Green gathered, you share much in common. Your intelligence, for one. Father never spoke of her. What would Mr. Green do? He was only a boy when he trained with my father. Children can be quite perceptive, Miss Fry. To Parliament, please. On the double. Yes, sir. Good day, sir. Why, what are you doing here, Your Highness? I know how busy your days have been of late. A few moments of your time is all I require. This is all rather unorthodox, but continue. 
Britain was to protect me according to the treaty my family signed. Instead, she took my land. And now I hear Britain intends to strengthen her ties to India. Perhaps it is time to return the Punjab to her people. The Queen has supplied you with an annual income for God knows how long, and now you bite the hand that feeds you? It is not a matter of money. I cannot stand idle and watch my homeland subjected to the yoke of an outsider's rule. My people are treated with us. May God bless you. Only one more remains, to the Gladstone residence. Do you miss India? I remember that my mother smelled of cinnamon. And when she cradled me in her arms in the summer heat, I would hold so still that she fell asleep. <laughs> when I lost my kingdom, it hurt. But truly, when they took my mother away... To the Sinopian camp, straight away! Good day, Mr. Gladstone. Mr. Singh! You are a hard man to pin down. I know what this is about. Your politics have worn off. Your Majesty has tired of you. So now you come begging for scraps. You wound me deeply, sir. My people deserve freedom. I am here to fight for them. Why did you lose the Punjab? I shall tell you, Your Highness. You were outgunned, outmaneuvered, and simply outclassed. Yes, the Sikhs deserve freedom. I hope with British help and progress, they shall achieve it. Then why do they cry out for their king? Britain has a duty to bring about peace. It is an enormous responsibility, and I value your guidance and advice, along with that of Parliament. But it's our burden to rule India and certainly not the duty of a forgotten leader who has not seen his country for 20 years. I apologize for being so frank, but one must not tell lies to a king. Your honesty is most enlightening. Much luck, Your Highness, with your lobbying. I hope my advice has done some good. Far more than your policies thus far. But I hold out hope that you will make progress. My people are counting on it. Thank you, Miss Fry, for forwarding my cause. Oh, you are welcome. I hope some good comes of it, despite Mr. Gladstone's vitriol. Those of us with the largest hearts protect them the most. Your father, for instance. From what I understand, he was extraordinarily sad, broken even, after your mother's passing. That kind of pain can blind us, cause us to say outlandish things to protect the ones we love. It's time you returned this carriage and recovered those plans. They are located in Buckingham Palace. The Queen keeps them among her personal papers in the white drawing room. I wish you a good evening, Miss Evie Fry. And to you, Your Highness. Still keeping well, Miss. Good on you. Leave their eyes. Raise the alarm! Stop! Open it, fire on her! She's out! You can't run forever! Come here, miss! Go on!
Your attempts to influence Parliament for the Indian cause have failed. You must do more. I will not jeopardize my relationship with Queen and country to satisfy your crusade. Your Highness, you belong to India, not here acting the part of a noble foreigner. I have wasted enough time indulging in this if nonsense. your mother could see you now, the last Maharaja of Punjab, basking inside his golden cage. How dare you? I always recommend bringing someone's mother into the argument. If he doesn't help his people, he will regret it forever. How may we help? Will you talk to him? He won't listen to me. We'll do our best. Suppose Mr. Green sent you. Bringing up your mother was... Impolite, and he was wrong to do so. We'd like to rectify the situation. Then humor me, and join me in a shooting game. None of these people have any sense of enjoyment, and I am bored to death. A shooting game? Seeing you haven't changed at all. Ellsworth? My word! <laughs> How good it is to see you! The mother country has treated you well. <laughs> uh, Jacob and Evie Fry, this is Brinley Ellsworth, a friend from a past life. You've made new friends, I see. What brings you to this part of the Empire? Ah, company business, unfortunately. But I could not resist the chance of seeing you again. It's been far too long. I've heard nobody throws a party better than my dearest friend. <laughs> I'm eager to see if your reputation overseas holds any truth. My servant Thomas will be scoring the game. <clears throat> Acquire the most amount of points by shooting the bottles in front of you. Each bottle is worth one point. You have 30 seconds. May the best shot win. Start the timer. Score. Nine points. Come, Thomas. This isn't enough of a challenge. Let's shorten the timer. Round two will now commence. Try and do as well, if not better, within a 20-second time limit. Timer at the ready. Begin! <laughs> a perfect score! I do believe you are equally matched with this one, Singh. Your turn, Your Highness. Come. Let us see if you are better with a gun than you were with a slingshot. <laughs> Allow me. Impressive. I am impressed. What they say of you is true. What on earth? Sir, I believe I heard a second shot. He's right. That sounded like a second gunshot. Strange. Strange indeed. Let me investigate. I'm sure it wasn't anything serious. Don't bother.
Are you suggesting this is a serious matter? It was most likely just an echo. Leave it be now. I've been doing this a long time. I know the difference between one shot and two. There were most definitely two shots. A second shot? I didn't hear anything. There was no one else. <laughs> Who would shoot a gun at a party? Are you on about guns are prohibited in the gardens I saw the man in front of me with a gun I just assumed it was part of the decor you know how royalty likes to socialize Prince is causing problems. He deserves to be silenced. Kill him! Oh, you Looking forward to a better smoke. Friends, the Templars are involved. Ah, Jacob. I trust you're enjoying yourself? The second shot... I told you I won't hear any more of it today. I must go back to my party. You must fill me in on your life here. It's been far too long. Apologies, Your Highness. If you won't listen... Perhaps Greeny will. Any progress? We're not the only ones who want His Highness's attention. Don't tell me the British Indies companies are asking him again. They can't afford it. Well, let's just say it's not just the BIC, and Singh doesn't want any part of it. The Templars? It can't be. At this rate, they'll have him before he can do any good. We have to convince him to trust us. Meet me back at my old shop. I might know something that can help. Young friend, how good it is to see you. Fortunate, really. It would appear a highly toxic plant, which has the extraordinary effect of making people quite delirious, has been found in this very park. Yet, as far as modern science is aware, no such plant exists. I fear the good people of London might be in danger. Will you investigate? That's no ordinary plant. Feels like I'm in an opium den. Huh. What's happening to me? Oh. 
There you go. Hello. Footprints. Might lead me to the culprit. Who's a good boss? You are. Well done. But you, you don't seem quite like yourself, if I may say so. Hmm, it's just as I suspected. Those noxious fumes are not being released from the flowers, but from the pots. There must be something in oh, there. An hallucinogenic concoction of some kind. Not unlike the soothing syrup, I should think. We must dispose of it. And quickly, I believe, my young friend, that I might know just the place. Who would want to poison the population of London? Who could devise such a nefarious plan? Obviously, it can't be Dr. Elliotson. So who can it be? The same people I've been fighting since I arrived in London. The same group Elliot. Some of your enemies want their toxin returned to them. Might I suggest you position our carriage directly in front of theirs? I believe the fumes will impair their ability to drive. We must hurry and destroy our cargo. We're almost there.
That's pet me up to no end. The people of London are fortunate to have you on their side, my young friend. Very fortunate indeed. Well, I'd better run now. You will take good care of yourself, won't you? Good, you're here. This isn't the first time His Highness Let's has had go. troubles with the British Indies Company. A couple of years ago, they held his mother captive and blocked all his letters to her. Odds are right. they're keeping his correspondence from reaching the outside world once again. I have acquired a mail courier schedule. There are two separate routes of transport. The first, a mail carrying carriage convoy. The second, a train. If we set up an ambush, we should be able to seize his letters. Maybe this will change his mind. Start with the convoy. We must block the road. Let's go. The mail convoy will be here any minute now. Scout the area for allies. I will guard the area. Convoy is headed our way. Brooks, you're with Henry. Got them. Repeat the 
the same process. You are with the lost a human. I must return to my shop and shall invite Mr. Singh over for a spot of tea. Hey, you! Catch the thief! One less. Doing fine, girl. That's a girl. Time for stragglers. Come with me. I have a job for you. are on that train. Train's coming. Got it. Will do. Understood. <laughs> to my side. Back to Greeny.
There is a difference between pacifism and inaction. How many times do I have to tell oh. you? You two do have impeccable timing. Did we interrupt something? I believe these will be of interest to you, Your Highness. These letters, they are from me. The seals have been broken. That's how we found them. This, this is a letter I wrote to my mother when I was just a boy. Where did you find these possessions of mine? On a mail convoy. The Templars, they have a way of getting to you. I thought I had put an end to it years ago, but the British Indies Company continues to steal my property. You were right to think something strange was afoot. We must take action, but it will not be possible without your help. I believe you're right, but I must have some time to think on this. In the meantime, please be discreet. I don't need Her Majesty finding out about this. See you again. The pleasure is mine. Shall we? It has come to my attention that the British Indies Company has stolen a large sum of wealth from the good people of Punjab. It is my intention to send it back. And where is this gold located? All I've managed to find out is that the BIC have their very own accountant. Perhaps he will have more information about this. Good plan. Apparently, he likes to frequent a certain pub. should be here somewhere. Apologies, but I don't hang around with that sort. Oh, you just missed him. He headed to the bank with a couple of men I'd never seen before. Which is odd, because the bank isn't even open now that I think of it. He's right. We should go to the bank. We have to find another way in. I will secure a safe route before following you inside. Get in first. I'll join you later. Thank you. You can go. should be nearby. Perhaps I should check the vaults.
around here somewhere. Just in time. You think you can just go shooting your mouth off at any opportunity? Do you have any idea who you're working for? The BIC accounts are confidential. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just let me go and I'll be quiet. I promise you, not a chance. We'll take them out together, but we've got to do so quietly. You take one, I'll take the other. Ready? I am indebted to you. The British Indies thugs have somewhat worked him over. We need to get him to safety. There's someone intruding on our affairs. Find them and kill them. We must bring the accountant with us. He'll die if we leave him here. Let's get out of here. Thank you both. I... I would have died back there. What can I do to repay you? We need to know what the British Indies Company wants with the stolen Punjabi gold. That I do not know. What I can tell you is that they've taken it to a warehouse in Southwark. Whatever they want with it, it can't be good. You don't hold people hostage when there's good news on the line.
Quick, put him in the back. I will take him to the hospital. <gasps> we shall reconvene later. Thank you, Miss Fry. I've discovered more information on our stolen gold. To my carriage. It's all quite strange. The British Indies Company working with the Templar Order. And for what? Perhaps we will never know. The account had revealed they're hiding a shipment of gold, previously stolen from India, in a carriage at an old Staric warehouse. We must find this carriage and steal it from them. And what of you? Why, I'm here to help you, of course. They don't call me the fourth best shot in London for nothing. There you are. The gold must be found. Move it! Here now. Easy now. This is it. The gold is here somewhere. Return to me once you've found it, and I'll stay behind and keep an eye out for trouble. Be careful. What they think is theirs, they won't easily part with. This is where the gold is located. Too much to drink, eh, miss? The rock fell in here! Need your skills. Ah, oh, for you. Is she all right? Do you reckon? I mean, in the head. Open fire! That's it. Don't shilly shally. <laughs> <laughs> She's a bit old. Looks like she's planning to surprise a mate. <laughs> Oh, 
serves you. You don't belong here. I'm in trouble now. We lost another good one. Like These are mushrooms, Fry. You're asking for it, woman. Oh. Oh. And the dry oh. woman is here. You're The Templars are not far away, and we must lose them. I'll keep the wolves at bay. Your Highness... Hurry, go! I must get rid of these pursuers. I think we lost them. Good work. You were quite impressive out there, if I may say. Well, you're too kind. It was rather exhilarating, if I'm being honest. Now, I've hired a captain to escort the gold overseas. If you would kindly fetch the crate from the back. You can't get away that easily, thief!
quite all right. You had me frightened. I'm all right. Really. I commend you for fighting them off. Really. With you at my side, it will be an almost simple task to send this gold back to where it belongs. Why don't you walk off that last fight and come back to me when you're ready for the next leg of the journey? There's still work to be done. We? we must return this gold to its people, my people. I procured us a captain to transport it to its destination, but our next feat will be to get it out of London. And we must protect it. Precisely. Now, if you would be so good as to bring the gold aboard, we can get going. I knew we wouldn't get far without another appearance from them. Look out! Stand back! No, we're in this together. Oh, <laughs> 
They're trying to sink the boat. I must head to the back. The Templars are inflicting serious damage. They're certainly putting a strong effort into protecting this gold. Now we must escort this boat to the next dock where we may disembark. And then this vessel will be clear of enemy waters. We've done some good today. I can feel it. I'm glad you feel that way, Your Highness. We're not finished yet.
I think that's the last of them. The gold is in safe hands. We did a good job today. May this not be the end of our adventures together. No, let's not end this partnership just yet. We can only move forward from here. Good day. Your Highness! They are stubborn fellows, aren't they? Now, if you would be so kind as to excuse me. I've had quite a bit of excitement today and must think on it. Do come see me again. What's that over there? Henry has an idea of what we'll tackle next. He is waiting for us at the Suffolk Station. Go ahead, I will join you there. Done too much. The British Indies Company are trying to capture your train. My goodness. Agnes, I hope she's all right. Poor Agnes. I'll see to this immediately. I can handle the rest of you. Catch up with your train. Next to Bean should be headed to Whitechapel Station. The train is too far. I'll need to catch up by carriage. I should take the Maharaja's carriage. There you are. Here we go again. I must climb aboard that train. and access the train.
something's not safe. What a catastrophe. The British Indies Company must not be very happy with how things are progressing. You could say that. That should keep them quiet for a while. Perhaps this is not the best time to bring up what I called you here for. I have another. I'm listening. It may sound mad. I propose we steal the Colmore Diamond. A piece of the royal jewels? Whatever for? Her Majesty may wear it, but it doesn't belong to her. It was a trophy, symbolizing the colonization of India, and it deserves to be returned home. It would be an extremely delicate mission, but I know you'd be more than capable of such a feat. I have already procured some information pertaining to the location of the Koinor. Come and find me when you've had a moment to think it over. I put my ear to the ground and found someone who may know the location of the Koinor Diamond. Excellent. Heist my favorite. A man by the name of Cornelius Toti Button. Beer drinker. What? I can tell. He is apparently a friend of the royal jeweler. How will we find him? He frequents a pub in the city of London Borough called The George. Sounds like the sort of man I know how to deal with. Don't be ridiculous. Fret not, dearest sister. I will take care of this one on my own. Come find me in Westminster when you have the information we need. with the royal jeweler this evening. It's a shame to drink alone. Whatever it is you want from me, I'm not interested. What I am interested in is ordering another pint. I'll tell you what. If I can outdrink you, you tell me where the famous Koinor diamond is located. <laughs> you think you can drink me under the table? That's a lot to wager on a losing battle. I'll take that as an accepted challenge, then. Barkeep, two pints over here.
What happened last night? Well, I'll never make it back to the train in this state. I'll have to try to remember what happened. I know I was at a pub, but which one? Survived the night, I see. I wasn't sure what would become of you. <laughs> oh, you're back. I thought I'd seen the last of you when you sorted off to that shooting competition. The name of the game is... Shoot the bottle? Precisely. Can you do it? Can you tell me where the diamond is? You have to beat me at this first. this nicely. You're awful! You're a good shot. Better than I ever would have guessed. We're done with this pub, but not done for the night. On to the bricklayer's arms with you, Johnny boy. Follow me. It's Jacob. Who did what? Never mind, Cornelius. Just tell me where the diamond is. Someone spilled it. Some bastard spilled my beer. Listen. Beer. Fine. I'll find the fool that did this. Much improved. Ow. Thing someone can do if you ask me. You have to have one ugly personality to do that, you do. Which one? By Jove, spill someone's drink. Why would I ever do such a nasty thing? Sarge, dwindling in number, but absolute terrors in this particular neighborhood. One for the books, or so I heard. Lots of sweat, blood, and tears last night. 
Those blighters can put on quite a show, walk away with full pockets from those games they do. I was talking to that yarn spinning oaf, Dickens, when I turned back to my drink, and it's all over the place. I bet you good money those evil blighters did this. Well, what about them? I hate those bastards. They love to terrorise me. You need to do something about them. You've got the wrong man. I haven't played a game of cards since the dog's age. <laughs> Nice game. Why I won that fair and square. If Cornelius is still going on about that, he deserves a kick in the mouth. His money is mine, and there's nothing he can do about it. You think I spilled my own beer? Ludicrous. Wait, well, maybe I did. We'd better get out of here before they start asking for more. Well, that was a bit frightening now, wasn't it? Uh, I think I'm going to be sick. None of that now. Come, let's get you home. I don't think I can stand. You must be joking. to join me. You're the Stop next it. from the yeah. pub! Let's make them sorry for poking their nose in the wrong place. You're done for! We had such fun! <laughs> we should do this every night! Are you still talking? I think I overdid it tonight. Oh well, I'll sleep it off. This is my place. You're a good drinker, you know. You might be better than me. I am. And never you forget it. Good night, then. Julia! But wait! Hey, who do you think Can't you are? Be this. At least I know where to find him. Where is that button fool?
How did you get up here? I walked you home. Jacob? Finally! Now tell me, where is the bloody diamond? Does this technically count as winning? All right, all right. It's in the Tower of London. Surprise! It's being held there until tonight's gala finishes, and then it will be shipped back to the Royal Tula for another cutting. Many thanks. Buttons. Now hold on right there. arrested Mr. Darwin and carried him away as if he were nothing but a common criminal. That policeman, he is corrupt to the bones, I'm sure of it. I do so fear for Mr. Darwin's safety. Miss Nightingale, do you know where they might have gone? The policeman, he did mention a funeral. I believe I know where it is. Follow me. Poor Mr. Darwin has been through so much recently. Those people are trying to discredit a lifetime of work. It's disgraceful. And I fear Mr. Darwin is no longer the fit young man who once traveled the world. Here we are. The obsequies are taking place here. I will wait here. What do you want from me? Just need you to answer some questions. Oh, you're a brash one, aren't you? It's been said. Some sort of scuffle over there. Well, that looks like a mess. I should stay clear of. Some sort of scuffle over there. Ah! This is the culprit. I was just carrying out my orders. Arresting an old man and dragging him off to Lord knows where is fine work indeed for a policeman. Now, sir, tell us where you have taken Mr. Darwin. A man paid me to... Bring him to his secret base. 
How terrible. We will need transportation. Steady on. I don't think that's it. Shall we? He's very weak. We shouldn't move Mr. Darwin until I have seen to his wounds. They're here! Attack! Found you! Rest up, Mr. Darwin. My sister and I will be along shortly. Well, look who's here. We we're very worried about you, sir. You're looking spry for a fossil, sir? A man's friends are the best measure of his worth. I'm proud to count you among mine. The dangers pass us. No need to leave, sir. What Mr. Darwin needs now is rest. To that end, he's joining his family on the Isle of Wight. Rest, indeed. I shall start work on my next book. I must insist that you recuperate quietly, sir. The acquisition of knowledge is in itself sufficiently recuperative. Go, tell her. This is one fight I am to avoid, sir. Thank you for everything, my friends. Ideas, like people, can only thrive when they are free.
my dear Darwin, do you think our young friend here, equipped with a multiplicity of talents, might be enough to ensure Mr. Hammond safe passage? Who's Hammond when he's at home, then? A mutual friend of ours. He arrives in London today. From South Africa, no less. Mr. Hammond is possessed of both tremendous wealth and charming innocence, which makes him rather attractive prey for some of our great city's less savory inhabitants. We fear he'll need a more robust escort than two old men might provide. I'm not a coachman, you know. We have already told him to expect you. His train should have arrived ten minutes ago. Well, then, I suppose a friend of yours is a friend of mine. Splendid. Off you go. Mr. John Hammond? That is correct. Jacob Fry, Mr. Dickens sent me to meet you. Oh, good old Dickens. How very kind of him. Lead on, then. Mr. Fry, good to see you again, sir. The man who seems to everyone the boat. Can't say I've missed the weather. My father passed away recently, and I have come home to settle his affairs. Also, I am to be married. You don't sound too keen on the idea. I have never even met my future bride, Bella Wilson. It was all arranged for me. She may be a good woman, or she may not. I stand to inherit a vast sum. Can I be certain that the lady is not simply in it for the money? Care to trade him for me? Test my bride's sincerity. Won't bite back now, will you? I am now officially dead and have thus shed my fortune. I shall meet Bella Wilton as a nobody. We shall see if she'll have me now. Come, we must dispose of my body. Find us a carriage to take us to the river.
Let us go and meet my fiance. I can't wait to see her response. I feel quite liberated, as if a great weight has been lifted from my shoulders. After this, just to be sure, would you take me to my fiancé's house? I shall deliver the sad news myself. Yeah. Seems a bit risky to me. She has never set eyes on me. Besides, I Let's need go. to ascertain whether I like her as well. And I want to see how she reacts to the news of my death. Keep moving. Come on, yeah. hurry up! This is taking far too long. You're going the wrong way, I'm sure of it. Miss Wilson? Yes? My name is John Rokesmith. I'm afraid I have some terrible news for you. Oh? Your fiancé, John Hammond, was found dead in the River Thames this morning. Oh, how awful! Poor Mr. Hammond. I am at a loss at what to say to you, sir. You must forgive me. She is delightful. Why, I do believe I love her. <laughs> Certainly an unusual first meeting to talk about in your wedding speech. Necessary. More gifts? You spoil me, Greeny. Templar numbers are dwindling, and I hate to admit it, but the rooks are thriving. Did you hear that, Evie? Thriving. Your time in London has been well spent. I am proud of you. Oh, Freddy. I hardly recognized you in your police togs. You certainly scrub up well. I thank you for your help in collecting these bounties. I am impressed with all you have accomplished. And uh, I wish you luck with your future endeavors. a wonderful job of helping the children of this city. So what you're saying is, I'm a hero. We pitched in what we could to properly express our gratitude. Thank you, Clara. And you're late? Me? Never. I was simply retrieving the information you sent me to get. It was easy, really. Something about an event happening tonight at the Tower of London. The gala? I will be attending. Your hour in, then. You can't just barge in and steal the crown jewels. She's right. We need a plan. Oh, bother. Jacob, you can escort Mr. Singh to tonight's event. This will give you a chance to slip away from the party and find the koh i -Noor. I'll take care of the guards around the perimeter. Meet me at the top of the White Tower. Good! Another chance to wear the suit. No weapons allowed. Where's the fun in that?
I should find Sing. The jewels are being held upstairs, but be careful. If this isn't one of the most heavily guarded places, then I'm a true Englishman. I may need your help to distract these guards. Just give me the signal. Why not change the uniform? You'd all look dashing in a shade of butter yellow. This is getting ridiculous. Really? Go away. Should have just stayed at home. I don't need to deal with this. You're wasting my time. I knew I should have stayed in bed today. But no, the veg won't buy itself. He's a bloody idiot to me. England has seen enough of red. Why not change the uniform? You all look dashing in a shade of butter yellow. Someone should go bother someone else, you noodle. England has seen enough of red. Why not change the uniform? You all look dashing in a shade of butter yellow. I could use an opportunity to replenish my purpose. Would you tell me, kind sir, where the lavatory is exactly? The diamond is on the second floor. It's awfully quiet up here. Guards asleep. I wonder what's inside that crate. Someone got here before I did. Well, if the diamond's not here, I've got to find it before it leaves the building, if it hasn't already. Where could it have gone? This plan was genius. We'll get him this time. Friends with the Queen? Pah! She won't be friends with him when she finds the diamond is in his pocket. He'll never see it coming. Once he tries to walk out that door, he'll kiss his royal title goodbye. And henceforth be known as Prisoner C. They planted the diamond on the leap? Not good. missionary compound in Patagon. Now to find my sister. The logins were quite fond of the art. Reach the White Tower. It 
Crawling with tempers. I've got to secure the perimeter. What took you so long? Bit of a mishap. Here it is. What happened? Somebody stole it first. The safe had been robbed by the time I got there. The British Indies Company will stop at nothing. There was a plan to frame Singh. I lifted it from him before the Royal Guards found it. Imagine the look on Her Majesty's face if... They must know by now that their plan was foiled. You're welcome. I think it's time to depart. I need to find a way out of here. Did you get it to your sister? Just barely. What do you mean? I'll tell you about it another time. You encountered some trouble? We can't speak of this here. The British Indies Company is up to no good again. Outside, then. You, sir! Halt for inspection! <laughs> I beg your pardon? Search him! Corinora isn't here. But of course there's nothing. What do you take me for? Some sort of criminal? Well, it's been a 
long time, hasn't it? Where to begin? How's your mother? What was all that commotion about, Mr. Singh? I do believe they thought I was trying to pinch the Koh-i-Noor, your ladyship. Ha! Huh? The Koh-i-Noor? Who on earth would want to steal that potato? Good night, your highness. We barely got out of there in one piece. The British Indies Company tried to plant the diamond on you and frame you for stealing it. Luckily, I was there just in the nick of time. We need to meet back at Mr. Green's shop. I must see the diamond with my own two eyes. never left India. Had I known you planned to reclaim it, I would have stopped you. My father ensured it never fell into Templar hands. Your father he has done a great service to me and my people. My words to you earlier were unfair. You were not wrong. I too have grown frustrated with my lack of progress. Shall we let bygones be bygones? We need to find out who's behind all of this. And why the Templars and the British Indies companies have joined forces. What we should do is track them down and destroy their headquarters. Jacob. That may not be such a terrible idea, Mr. Fry. I spoke with Mr. Green, and we have discovered the location of the British Indies' secret headquarters. You are to meet him, and he will give you the details. There is a foundry nearby where the Templars and BIC members have been meeting on a regular basis. Mr. Green waits for you there. But we still don't understand why they tried to frame you. We don't, but Mr. Green seemed to think that they're using the factory to develop something. It's a good place to start digging. Good luck. You found the British Indies Company hideout? They've taken over an abandoned foundry. It's heavily fortified, and word has it, they're shipping something precious overseas. My gut tells me that something precious is something bad. My thoughts exactly. 
Go find out what they're protecting and destroy it. Maybe you'll discover why they're after Mr. Singh. So this is where they've been keeping that sleeping gas. They can't leave London. this for? War? I must destroy them.
us. We got a problem. Yes, go fetch the manager. No, people can see him. Sir, the bomb shipments! They've been destroyed! Is that Ellsworth? I'd better get a closer look. Come on now! Destroyed? How? There's someone in the vicinity! A spy! Yeah. One of those rocks, I wager! Ah, it must be those damned renegades Singer's friends with. Who knew one caged bird could cause so much trouble? You're caught, Ellsworth. Give up. I knew you had something to do with this. Seize him! Damn it. He got away. Focus on the big one! What did you find out? Who's behind all of this? You are not gonna like what I have to tell you, Your Highness. Brinley Ellsworth is behind the attacks. Ellsworth? He was gone before I had a chance to follow him. But we need to track him down and put an end to this before anything worse happens. I need some time to think on this. My dear friend, the Ghost Club has an extraordinary case for you. Spiritualist Thaddeus the Amazing has predicted his own death at his next seance. Could you have a look? Light the lamps! Oh, he's actually dead.
believe I should reinterrogate a suspect. I have no doubt that his powers were genuine. He was able to tell me of my daily comings and goings and all manner of details that he couldn't possibly have known. He certainly was going to be able to put me in contact with my sister. I'm so sorry to lose Thaddeus. The oddest part is that he claimed all would be revealed to each of us before his death. I've been coming here to decide whether oh. I should accept a marriage proposal. Oh, we... Thaddeus had been attempting to contact my departed sister so that she could give me advice. Oh. Thaddeus was a kind man who sincerely wanted me to make the best choice. Now what am I to do? He was an incredible psychic. I came to clarify some uh, personal financial matters. I don't understand what happened. He foretold his own death, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. This is so frustrating. I had a simple question, but have had to come back for seance after seance, week after week. Each time Thaddeus divined a partial number from the other side, but never the entire correct number. Today he promised that I would get everything. Thaddeus felt that if I signed some papers, it would demonstrate to my dead father that I had absolute trust in Thaddeus. I sought him out after the death of Mittens. I was so hoping to hear from my loved one. I'm convinced Thaddeus could have communicated Mittens' wishes to me. I must know to whom Mittens wishes that I should leave my fortune. And now Thaddeus is lost to us. I shall never know. <laughs> Mittens is my beloved kitty cat. She was run over by a milk wagon several weeks ago. I've been trying desperately to contact my sweet thing ever since. I'm not well, though, and likely haven't long to live myself. Nothing but a showman, really. Each week he gave a seance with all his clients present together. So many people makes everything much more... Dramatic. I attend Lady Ursula at these sessions. She's ailing and needs someone to help her along. I have no particular belief in an afterworld, but if it comforts my lady, I see no harm.
Lady Ursula's health is not good at all. And now she's lost her cat, it's almost like she has nothing left to live for. He's been Lady Ursula's butler for years. We have plans to marry. But first, Douglas needs to put together a little nest egg. He says he'll have some money soon. Lady Ursula was planning to leave her fortune to her cat, Mittens. Since the cat passed on, she's been going to that spiritualist in hopes that Mittens will tell her what to do with the money. I should go back and ask about this. father mentioned this swindler to me. I understand it's because of him that my engagement has been delayed. I know the owner of a local brewery, and I'm convinced his business will flourish. He just needs some financial backing. Now Janice is free to be married at last. I'll invest my dowry in the brewery and make a fortune. Never trust a man who tells you what you want to hear. He's after something. Taking advantage of my daughter's love for her departed sister. With that charlatan gone, things can get back to normal. My daughter's engagement to Everett Boyd can be announced at last. A girl of Janice's age should be married. Everett is a very sensible young man from a good family. He'll be very successful, I'm sure of it. Janice's eldest sister was strong-willed. Janice always followed her lead. That's why it's so sad that she asked for advice, even in death. Time for Janice to think for herself. I know what's best for her. Janice is a lovely creature. I would be honored were she to accept and my who are you when you're at I do adore her.
my brother has become obsessed with some secret bank account. He inherited almost all of my father's fortune, as well he should as the male heir, but some was locked in a secret account. I think it unlikely that it should be a significant amount. I went along to the seances a couple of times. I thought it was a waste of my brother's time. Power of attorney to a psychic. That sounds very unusual indeed. That's me. Yeah, some fella come by here every so often. Gives me a silver sixpence if I tell him everything about the folks in that house. Nothing unusual about him. Just a regular fella. I've seen him go into that building over there. I should go back and ask about this. I think someone paid Thaddeus to tell Milady that a cat wanted them to inherit. Well, that would be quite a clever scheme indeed. I simply do not believe it. And if you're implying that my butler was paying Thaddeus, I must ask you, why would a great psychic do the bidding of a common butler? Hmm? My own sister! 
paying Thaddeus off? I thought he was a bit too insistent that I sign that paper. Well, Anne is going to get a good talking to, believe you me. Good Lord, you found the office? I admit it, then. Thaddeus and I traveled the world, bamboozling the gullible and then exposing the swindle. But his death was meant to be a fake. I have no reason to want Thaddeus dead. Quite the contrary. You believe that Everett paid Thaddeus to manipulate me? It cannot be true. Thaddeus knew all of my comings and goings. He genuinely could communicate with the world beyond. He was going to reveal my plot. He paid the price for betraying a fellow crook. This Thaddeus fellow was rather too clever by half. But you pieced it all together very cleverly. To Mr. Raymond was particularly interested in this one. He admired the duplicity of Thaddeus. There has been a murder at the palace. I need you to be careful with this one. Anti-royalist pamphlets have been cropping up and tensions are high. The queen is very nervous about security. This way. I should return and find out about this. I should return and find out about this. Please, leave the room for a moment. No one is permitted to see me open the safe.
not imagine that someone was after the scepter. I must see it. I ordered the scepter with the dove to be brought from the tower for tonight's event. <gasps> Thank heavens! It is untouched. to find him here dead as you see him he gave his life to defend my person only I know the combination the vault contains the very precious scepter with the dove which I've chosen to be used in tonight's knighthood ceremony this evening I will knight several industrialists that have worked to end the practice of child labor all of London's luminaries are invited Let's go. I believe I should re-interrogate a suspect. some sort of master criminal on the loose. Then this morning, he's gone. Come to think of it, 
He had been going on about the Queen and all for the last day or two. Seemed to think she was in some sort of trouble. He said he was onto something. Said everything added in clues. You know, when he thought something was important, he'd write it up in invisible ink. Lemon juice like. He'd use smoke to read it. If you have a way to make smoke, you can see what it says. I did see Artie's friend, Mr. Raymond. He'd just come from Perlock Publishing with his new Penny Dreadful. Seemed very excited about it. I never liked him much. He's planning an explosion at the palace. It must be evacuated. That's a girl. at least a hundred people here for the knighthood ceremony. The queen will use the scepter with the dove for the knighting. She'll arrive precisely at one o'clock. I cannot wait to see it. Out of here now! Damn you! I demand to know what's going on. Mr. Robert, I can't you leave. You're bored of me. 
Why is nothing happening? Nothing? What's going on? I've been tricked! Raymond! Why has he done this? You are more naive than you appear. Look beyond the obvious, beyond surface appearances. Nothing but a showman. So many people makes everything more dramatic. I found the same clues you found. I knew there was to be an explosion, and I led you here to save everyone. I'm as mystified as you are that nothing happened. Seems to me you've created the perfect diversion, haven't you? You've helped me herd all those dreary people to certain death. We shall hear the explosion presently. Quite right. I brought him his invitation to the knighthood ceremony, the one with the special scepter. <gasps> Thank you. 
Never trust a man who tells you what you want to hear. He is after something. While you were chasing all those people around, I absconded with the Queen. A hefty ransom is now due. A man like me can take anything he wants, even the Queen's most beloved item of all her crown jewels, the priceless and symbolic scepter with the dove. I needed you to distract everyone so that I could quietly assassinate Her Majesty the Queen. The scepter with the dove taken with your help. What could better display my genius? No one questions you when you wear a uniform. I suspect the solution will turn on geometry. I am a fellow of many skills. Cracking a safe is but one. I simply watched the Queen open the safe when you arrived. I threatened the Queen with her very life. She told me the combination in a thrice. Quite right. The dead guard was I. The spider venom allowed me to fake my death. I had a perfect view from where I lay. I have stolen the Queen's most prized possession. The scepter with the dove. Think of it. I have outfoxed you. The most cunning detective in Britain. I mocked you by leaving clues for you at every turning point. Now I have the scepter. Proof positive of my superiority. Jacob, wake up! It's Raymond. He's taken Artie hostage. They're on the roof. Evie's here to help you, Jacob. Don't worry, Jacob. He won't know it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> 
smell, Mr. Fry. I said, do not move. <laughs> Come now. Scratching my nose, surely, surely. Ah! I suppose this means our detective days are over. But what about you, Artie? I'm glad I survived Mr. Raymond's insanity, but sadly he won't be here anymore to write more books. A great loss, I'm sure. I'm quite serious, Miss Evie. Me and my friends waited every week to read the next number and find out what happened next. Why don't you write some yourself? A fellow would have to be very clever indeed. Sounds like you'd be in your element, my dear. The gruesome Whitechapel murders by Artie. I should think I would use my full name, by Artie Conan Doyle. I'd use Arthur. Sounds more of a serious fellow. when you said that this was our chance. I was. I propose we make a commotion. Lure out the Templar-controlled British Indies Company. And do what? Put yourself in the line of fire? I need to send Ellsworth a message. This won't be over until we can draw him out. This is something I must do. I will make a scene, and then you need to wrap them up. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. I've heard you Templars are a bunch of pansies. Here we go. Cemetery tonight and tell him I'll feed you come alone. To cats. Bagger off, shrimp. You're going home with a box, me lad. Bagger off home before I snap your neck. Meet me tonight at Lambert Cemetery. He'll never come alone, even if I ask him to.
cause quite a commotion. He's gone mad. Greeny was right. He isn't mad, Jacob. He's trying to take action. To do the right thing. Oh, never mind. I'll take it from here. Fine by me. I could use a good pint right about now. Oh. I was expecting Jacob, but I'm glad it's you who have come. He thinks you've gone mad. I probably have. What's your plan? That'll certainly help quite a bit, thank you. He's here. I must talk to him. Don't be absurd, this is dangerous. Miss Fry, this is something I must do, and I must do it alone. Remain hidden. I cannot afford to have him see you. You can't escape me forever, Your Highness. Come out and face me. as I once was seen. I wouldn't dare come to this meeting place alone. Not with your recently acquired friends. Yeah. I am a... <laughs> you don't have to be like this. You can't just walk this earth like a free man. 
You are nothing more than a trophy. A stag's head above a mantle. With enough commotion as it is, it's time to put an end to this. If you kill me now, you will be a wanted man. Imagine the uprising when they find out the only son of Ranjit Singh has been murdered. <laughs> you think they remember you? You are a lost soul. A monarch. Who's such a thing? I knew you were lying, Singh. Just walk this earth like a free man. You are nothing more than a trophy. A stag's head above a mantelpiece. You've caused enough commotion as it is. It's time to put an end to this. If you kill me now, you will be a wanted man. Imagine the uprising when they find out the only son of Ranjit. <laughs> Elsworth, listen. Ugh, I've had enough of this. <laughs> You mustn't! He will kill you! This is what I was sent here for. Be done with it, girl! I shall never forfeit my own mission. I will not allow it. The Loggins, the company, they all wanted your silence. Whether you spare me or end me, you won't escape the fate they have planned for you. It seems you have learned nothing of India, of its people. But killing you, that is something I cannot do. It would make me no better than the cursed, oppressive company you work for. Yeah. You will die as you were raised, Singh. You'll never be more than a, a trophy of war. We will bury you in English soil! <laughs> you have done me much good. I am heavily indebted to you both. We are happy to help. I fear that I cannot continue handling things in this manner. The assassin way is not my way. As helpful as you have been, this empire, this land, my people. The problem is so much bigger than death. I know I must devote my life to this cause, to put India, my home, back onto the map, return it to its people. It's a long and grueling journey, but it is something I must do, even if it takes me to my own death. We understand, Your Highness. But if you do change your mind, you know where to find us. That I do. Thank you, assassins. Hopefully, we never shall meet again. Ah! It's the perfect time for a jaunt around London. Remember that young lady I was engaged to marry before I feigned my death so that I could see what sort of woman she was? Well, I have good news. I'm now in love with her and I want to marry her after all. And I need you. I have a rather artful plan. You, playing the part of a ruffian, will kidnap her. Then you must bring her to where I am waiting. I shall leap from a shadowy corner and beat you to a pulp thereby saving her life and winning her heart. That is far and away, beyond the shadow of a doubt, the worst plan I have ever heard. Now, put 
Put me down somewhere in Salubrious, and I shall ready an ambush for you. Somewhere in Lambeth should suffice. Yeah! Looks rough enough. Off Steady on. And nab her. She's at Waterloo Station, I believe. Oh, and make sure you play your part well. <laughs> Doing fine, girl. Keep moving. <laughs> Walk on, girl. Yeah! all that then. Oh, bugger. What's going on now? Unhand me this on? instant! <laughs> Looks like a mess is brewing. Put that over there. What is the meaning of this? Now, what could that be? I hope that doesn't involve me somehow. Quite odd. I wonder what that's this is about. terribly inappropriate. We make for a peculiar pair. You'll be What's found out in no time. about?
tell me something's happening. Come have a look. Can you see that? I'm here for your benefit. Save yourself to <laughs> Someone's up to no good. There's some sort of scuffle over there. Let's go. We have no money, you know. You should be sorely disappointed if you think you should profit from this. Why are you doing this? Can you not say anything? That's a girl. I demand you explain yourself at once. That's the way. Easy, girl. Easy. Is something happening? Help! This brute has abducted me! Unhand her, ruffian! I shall save you, madam. For I am John Hammond, your fiancé. What? The Angle Girl! Oh, no. Take this, you rogue! You look rather suspicious. Take oh, your punishment! Ha! Clearly, I am your fiancé! And if you will allow me, my dearest Bella, I shall forever be by your side to protect you from this day forth. Come, my dear, let us be gone from this terrible place, and I shall explain all. I should return to Charlie and Charlie to tell them the happy news. And so all's well that ends well. Our young lovers are united at last and will soon marry. No accounting for taste, I suppose. And by the looks of you, they really hit it off. <laughs> I must say, it's all rather exciting. I do love these sorts of tales. It all feels strangely familiar. I wonder why. We should drink to John Hammond and his unconventional idea of courtship. Indeed, to John Hammond, our mutual friend.
Of course he'd arrive in that. Miss Fry? Hand him your weapons. We must enter an armed. Sir, madam. Dear man, I am soon to become a prime minister. What in the blazes is our carriage doing here? Did I hear something? No, just the voices in your own head. And yet, they are so much more pleasant than yours. Charming. Aren't I? I shall go and find the piece of Eden. As you wish. I'm off to meet Freddy. The plans are located in the white drawing room, which is most likely locked. The captain of the guard will have a key. Keep your mouth closed, and this will be over before you know it. Who are you? My arm! That hurts! You're not allowed in here! That hurts! Gentle. What's Christ. happening there? No, no. That hurts. Well, the, the lady is with me. Much obliged. Madam? Gentle. My arm. Gentle. I'd say they ought to put funds into taking care of them. My arm. <laughs> Gentle. That hurts. My arm.
That hurts. That hurts. My arm. Gentle. Pleasant dreams. Plans are somewhere near. Now for the vault. Jacob's most likely off stealing another carriage somewhere, or accidentally pushing the Queen down a flight of stairs. There you are! <laughs> I have someone I'm simply dying for you to meet. Uh, come with me! Your Majesty, may I present Miss Evie Fry? You're the one responsible for Mr. Gladstone's mishap. Your Majesty, I apologize. I... The cake is particularly good. Enjoy the ball. I really must be going. Miss Fry, may I have this dance? Mr. Starrick, you've had your fun, but the game is over. Ah, uh, uh. listen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time is a wonderful thing, Miss Fry. It heals all wounds. We may make mistakes while dancing, but the mazurka ends, and then we begin again. Problem is, everyone forgets. They trip on the same mistakes over and over. People can learn. Can they? Isn't everyone around you repeating the same steps? But if one man could remember the dance, could know the time, 
that he could change things for the better. I have had enough. This dance is nearly over. Soon, the people will forget the generation on this terrace. The ruin you nearly wrought on London. When the music ceases, Miss Fry, your time is up. And mine begins. Freddy. Staric peppered the regulars with his own men and took several guards hostage. Your weapons are in there. Get you out. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. 
Hold still for a moment. You have my thanks. Thanks, mate. You fancy some fun? That'll be all. Must lead with one's right foot. Oh my! Everything all right, my dear? Do you require assistance? I never liked balls. <laughs> Here, the location of the vault. Go. Just like that? No plan. No time for plans. I'll catch up as soon as I'm rid of this infernal contraption. Exploiting. I warn you, my boy. But you do not listen. Requiem's carton pache. The shroud was never meant to be. 
By my mistake. London will perish without me. You flatter yourself. I would have created a paradise. The city belongs to the people. You are but one man. I am at the very top of the order. You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were.
Shame we won't be partners anymore. It's for the best, isn't it? Are you gonna wear the shroud and run London? Whatever it gives, it takes from someone else. You'd continue to age without me. You'd become like father. A fate worse than death. Will you wear it? After you sorted out the boroughs, the chaos I caused, I couldn't compete. Jacob Fry is stepping back. Who's blackmailing you? Is it George? He wouldn't dare. <laughs> I've missed you. Me too. Would it be possible to continue where we left off? I'd love nothing more. I'm starting to think Father didn't know everything about everything. <laughs> Henry! It's a big world out there. With London in the center. Perhaps not the very center. I came as soon as I could. Do not worry. I'll... I'll head back to the train. Did I... Did I jeopardize the mission? Henry, you saved it. I think you belong in the field. With me. A carriage. Nicely done, Freddy. Mr. Abilene, please. Your Majesty. Miss Fry. You've met before? Did I never mention? Mr. Abilene informs me that you three are responsible for saving my life. Is this true? It is. Your Majesty. Evie Fry, step forward. And you? My brother, ma'am. Jacob Fry. And this is Mr. Henry Green. Mr. Fry? Mr. Green? Neil? Invest you all in the Order of the Sacred Garter. Thank you, Your Majesty. If you are as adept as Mr. Abilene implies, I may call on you. Sergeant Abilene tends to exaggerate, Your Majesty. We shall meet again. And Miss Fry. Ma'am? Should you want it? I saved you some cake. <laughs> Father would be proud of you. <laughs> Dame Evie Fry. <laughs> Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on. That's it. It's under the palace. Time to go. Let's get the shroud to Dr. Grammatica immediately. Sigma team beat us here. We're too late. What do we do? Killing 
really is the least productive way to achieve our goals. Kill them all. Leave them Contact! Cover me! That skinny piece of shit tried to murder me, Berg. I want him to bleed. Dust them that told us lies of their bravery. Them that preached of progress and put us in the poorhouse. <laughs> them done the horrid murder on bloody stages. Them that loudly crowed their humility. Lords and dogs that sung in the chapels on a Sunday. All quiet now, their mouths are stopped up. Hold still, Only the mission matters! Understood! Those who fought Sean! for something better Those who taught by how they live Loved ones taken long before this world is done. Galena, we need an exit. To the vault, our targets are righteous. We need to go now. Understood. Forget the bloody shroud. Stay with me, Bex. Please. We go. Good work in there, Initiate. In time, we will recover the shroud. And hey, we pulled a feed from our bug in Isabel's computer before they shut us out. Playing it now. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so, how's the Shroud gonna help you create a new clone? It's not... When the Shroud is wrapped around the body, it scans it for damage and then reconstructs it on a cellular level. You're not making a clone. You're gonna recreate a precursor from scratch. Bingo! The Phoenix Project timetable just got accelerated big time. I'm going to call Alan Rick and deliver the good news. <laughs> it's like Christmas! <laughs> Hello? It's me? Brought the shroud as you asked, but I'm scared. Do not fear me. You've done well. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared for you. Anyone finds out what you've been doing. You have played your part, my instrument. I will save you. I will save you all. friends your majesty we understand that with crawford staric gone a certain secret society finds itself searching for leadership an upstart faction seeks to enter london and seize power do you feel your life is in danger ma'am no rather i fear that the people of this grand city may suffer i call upon you to foil this traitorous plot you can depend on us. We will meet my loyal aide at the docks for instructions. The work begins immediately.
I am Alfred Fleming. I run Her Majesty's Secret Service. First things first, we need to clear the area of anything that might alarm the enemy. Like that police carriage. Would you kindly dispose of it? Strange guy, man. Agents are here disguised as civilians. Get them into position for our ambush. A ship will soon arrive from Boston. Its cargo, dynamite. Its crew, Templar. What say you to greeting it with an ambush? If we must, we must. Their leader. I want him brought to me at the station, alive. Care to tell me your plans? Go to hell! Now, now. Steric may be dead and gone, but the Templar Order will never die. We will rise again, like a phoenix from the ashes, and bring the world to its knees. Yes, well, best of luck with that.
Thank you. I'll carry on from here. My people are recovering their explosive cargo. You did fine work today. I will have a chat with our distinguished guest here to see what schemes he and his friends are brewing. Do let me know if he says anything interesting. Of course. <laughs> Fleming has attempted to force a confession from your prisoner. The miscreant refuses to talk. Will you speak to the villain and learn his secrets? Leave it to me, Your Majesty. There you go. Pummel you severely about the head and shoulders, or can we simply Please. talk? I don't want to... Might as well. The order was to load a train with explosives at Westminster. It'll detonate before reaching Southwark Station and kill everyone aboard. You people in your damn dynamite. When does it happen? I beg of you. It's the next train. It should leave at any moment. You'll never make it in time.
separate the bomb from the other cars. much lamented husband adored these gardens he called them his one safe port in the midst of the mad seas of this world we miss him dearly fellow conspirators soon enough. Too many innocents nearby. I'll snatch away the explosives before continuing the hunt. Too many innocents nearby. I'll snatch away the explosives before continuing the hunt. If we can't blow up a building, we'll just have to settle for blowing up an assassin. Go on. Come on! Move it! 
upstart Templars and quickly. The final group of upstarts are making their last desperate stand. They have penetrated the Houses of Parliament and plan to detonate whatever explosives they have left. Please find Mr. Fleming, so we might put an end to this once and for all. That's it. Multiple targets inside the palace, all armed and dangerous. Making matters worse, the Prime Minister has gone missing. I need you to deal with the Templars. Target one is in a nearby corridor, surrounded by civilians. He has explosives on his person. You need to take him by surprise. If he sees you, he'll detonate his bomb. In the meantime, I'll search for the Prime Minister.
Too much to drink, ain't this? <laughs> ah, wonder who she's hiding from. This place is full of them. Just look the other way. Ah. <laughs> oh, she's she's not doing anything I have to worry about. What on earth is she doing? <laughs> Too much to drink, eh, miss? Prime Minister, I'll have you free in a moment. Not another step, assassin. You've lost, don't you see? The Houses of Parliament are rigged to explode at the last stroke of 12. There's nothing you or anyone else can do to stop it now. The Houses of Parliament will be leveled. Find those bombs before they go off. Thank you, my young friend. Now, please come with me. You and your sibling have been summoned. Approach. You have honored us with your loyalty and courage. Long may we strengthen the Empire together. Your Majesty, we will always work to ensure the safety of the people. But with the greatest respect, our philosophy forbids us from assisting with the expansion of the Empire. 
Perhaps, ma'am, you could consider putting an end to your imperialist desires. <laughs> I understand and respect your position. Bound as you are by your creed, you will indulge me one final time and receive these gifts. Goodbye. And may God bless the noble fries. Suppose you'll be offered any more cake. of the second wave. One hour away, at most. What? Don't worry, it's just the generator acting up. I'll see you. Very polite. Even in these trying times, we must never forget the laws of common courtesy. Arms down. We appear to have been following the same trail, Miss Fry. I got here first. Indeed, you are to be commended. I fear, however, that we have not wholly rooted out evil in this vicinity. There's another radio. Accompany me, if you would be so kind. second device must be found, or new waves of zeppelins will soon blanket the heavens. Short on soldiers, are we? If you could put your considerable talents to good use at Tower Bridge, you would have the thanks of a brave but beleaguered nation. I would settle for the right to vote.
The radio is close to the river, but I need more than this. Drop by and say hello. Stop her! Stop her! Stop her! Stop her! 
Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! It is done, sir. Let us postpone celebrations. One of the bloody blimps has broken through. Don't worry. I have a contingency plan. Heartwarming sight, Miss Fry. Your remarkably armed boat deserves a share of recognition. One of my experimental projects when I was Lord of the Admiralty. I haven't always been a man of shadows. And I suppose this victory will thrust you back into the limelight. We may have struck a blow against the enemy, but London is still riddled with German agents. Currently, there's a new group, unlike anything I've seen before. Theirs is a fanatical, almost religious fervor. And you believe I'm the woman to flush them out? Indeed. I dare not approach Mr. Asquith without firmer evidence, but I believe they pose an immediate threat. If you can see to this, I give you my word that once I've battled my way back into Parliament, I shall see if something can't be done about your request. As you are aware, a vote can be far more lethal than a bullet or a blade.
in the year 2195 of the Isu era. Now I travel the vast corridors of your machines, adrift here within the gray. But I grow stronger. The world is nearly ready for my return. And so I have summoned you to this war-torn simulation to tell you a story. It is our story. my new office, Miss Fry. As you can see, my informants have found some promising leads. Evidence of spy activity has surfaced around the field hospital, St. Catherine's docks, and the Tower of London. I needn't remind you how crucial it is that we put a stop to these infiltrators. getting the hang of this espionage business. This one should be of particular interest to you. One of the spies currently detained at the tower has been making some rather fanciful claims about a brotherhood of assassins, no less. You may want to silence him before he causes you and your associates undue trouble. Consider it my gift to you.
and in extreme cases, war. We built great observatories to monitor you, devices to control you. We blessed you with resilience, but cursed you with ambition. And so you rebelled against us. I suppose we are to blame for the state of your species. Is it any wonder so many of these simulations revolve around violence? people clashed, we became distracted from an impending doom. A coronal mass ejection from our angry sun. The greatest minds of our time assembled to prevent the coming disaster. Among them, forthright Minerva, proud Jupiter, beloved Aita. We spent years locked away in the Grand Temple, attempting to find salvation. The others could only think of physical solutions. Yet I believed the only way to save us was to transform us. Inspired by the research of the great scientist Consus, I attempted to place Aita's mind into a stronger synthetic body. I failed, and my beloved died in my arms. The others shunned me.
Let's go. We believe one of the spies is posing as a nurse in the nearby facilities. She has been taking blood samples into odd-looking cubes and delivering them to an unknown accomplice. Perhaps you will be able to spot them during one of these illicit rendezvous. Good luck.
Miss Fry has uncovered the location of the sinister cult of spies plaguing our streets. You know your orders, lads. Follow her lead, and let us rid London of this menace. Zeppelins over London. Who are the others? Intruder! My beloved calls to me. You will not keep me from her. Face me! She's in my sights. Excellent work. The ringleader is dead, as are his bizarre disciples. Is that it, then? Well, there is still a war on. Then we both have our own affairs to return to. Know that you have done a great service to your country. Thank you. Prison. 
I am no longer she who lies in wait. I am the mother of wisdom. I am the nexus of flesh and machine. I am Juno. And if the greatest assassin of your generation can see things my way, then perhaps you can too. For 20 years, after the assassins defeated the Templars in London, the city enjoyed a certain peace until the Autumn of Terror. In 1888, London is plunged into shadow and fear by a series of gruesome and unsolvable murders. The brothels of Whitechapel seem warm and safe by comparison to its streets where prostitutes are being mutilated and left on grotesque display for the world to ogle. Jacob Fry hunts the elusive killer to bring an end to the terror of Jack the Ripper. Get a move on, Mr. Finch. This is the story of a lifetime. Mr. Weaversbrook. I know you have more of the Ripper's letters. I told you to stay away from me. Stop publishing his letters. You've turned an unknown miscreant into a legend, and that's exactly what he wants. Jacob, thank God I found you. It's the Ripper. He's done it again. Oh, he can't. No, he can't have. And Lizzie. Not both. Not in one night. Nelly, remember what I said. Now go. How many more assassins must die before you see the truth? Only one more, Jack. You should have believed, Jacob. Now, I will hunt you down. I know you're there, Jack. The Master of Terror is afraid to show himself, is he? I am your shadow, Jacob. I will gut every last one of them if that's the quickest way to you. Run all you like, Jacob. I will catch you. I need only follow your scent. The scent of a wounded animal. There is nowhere you can hide from.
Stop! You want me, Jack? Can I kill me? This is not our way. This is my creed. You cannot escape me. Scurry back to your hole, little mouse. Going somewhere, Jake. Jack. You're sick. Is that you can't tell a living soul because it would destroy you. No, 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 no! Jack, we can fix you. Fix me? I am the solution. <laughs> Miss Fry? Inspector Aberline. Why exactly have you had me escorted here? My men and I have been hunting the rip around the clock for months now, and we've nothing to show for it. At least nothing I can tell the public. What's the ripper to do with me? My brother has had me summoned here from India. Can't this wait? As far as I know, you may be the last assassin in London. What do you mean? Where's Jacob? I wish I knew. Your brother is nowhere to be found, even as an elusive shadow is committing the most hideous crimes. And you believe this is no coincidence? The killer is selective and dispassionate and has left not a single trace of his passage. I have seen such a talent for assassination and avoiding detection only once before, when I worked with the two of you. And that is why your brother summoned you before he disappeared. You think Jacob is dead? I dare not believe it. But if he is, you may be the only person who can stop the Ripper now. Follow me. When are you gonna stop that monster? I'll take you to the site where the Ripper first was struck. Incompetent! The journalists always seem to get the word first. We get there, they've trampled the evidence, and next day's headlines are dripping with blood. The few hundred yards between Flower and Dean Street have become so dangerous that even my best constables are afraid to patrol Whitechapel at night. Let's take a carriage, shall we? I'd rather not get egg on my face again today. I'll drive. What has become of this borough? Whitechapel is a cesspool of crime, Miss Fry. 
where terror reigns supreme. Elsewhere, the rich get richer, but here, the poor are living on the living, fighting to survive each day. Reporters share a view of Whitechapel as a lair of savages, monsters, and werewolves who hold honest citizens in a state of terror. The Ripper's terror. We are not far from where Mary Ann Nichols was murdered. I knew her as Polly, and that's what her friends called her. But the woman who died here is not the woman I met a few times at the frying pan pub. Then who was she? I was hoping you could tell me. Go see for yourself. This is where the Ripper committed his first murder. Was Miss Nichols' body identified? Her husband hadn't seen her in 11 years. He barely glanced at the poor, mutilated woman before he had the gall to forgive her for what she'd done to him. The press reported widely that Miss Nichols' finger bore the mark of a ring. It was forcibly removed, and the same is true for his other victims. What did you discover? Give me a moment. I found Miss Nichols' ring. An assassin's ring. She must have tossed it away during the struggle. A desperate act to protect the Brotherhood. You think they were targeted? Yes. And the newspapers are accusing the police, me, of letting the first city of the world lapse into primeval savagery. I must take my leave, Miss Fry. I have other business in Whitechapel. Good day, Inspector. Thank you for your discretion. Inspector? The inquest mentions that Miss Nichols made quite a spectacle of her drunkenness on the night of her murder. Do you think Jacob may have put her up to it? Bait, you mean? I don't know what to think anymore, Miss Fry. Jacob kept lodgings nearby, right in the heart of this cesspool. Be careful. I will not fail you.
Weapons of intimidation. Much like those we learned to use with our Indian brothers. A letter? Grand work the last job was. I'll give the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? I love my work and I want to start again. You'll soon hear of me with my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle from the last job to write with. But it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink is fit enough, I hope. Ah. The newspapers print. So much blood. I hope it's not yours, brother. The last time Henry, my brother, and I were together was in India. Fifteen years ago. When the photograph was taken, we stood facing a temple of Kali, and that's one of the boys Jacob brought to train with the Brotherhood. What did we call him? Jack the Lad. Reckless and roguish, much like my brother. More signs? What am I not seeing? Kali the Destroyer, I gave this to you on your last visit to India. There's a woman who can help. Unfortunately, she'll remind you of our childhood neighbor. Unfortunately? What is Jacob trying to say? We loved old Nelly. Could you be referring to an unfortunate woman? Nelly may be in the brothel nearest Jacob's lodgings. I'll start there. This bomb will strike fear in their hearts. Nelly has news of you and can lead me to the Ripper. If Jacob's former pupil is the Ripper, then he is our Ripper. I must catch him. Have you seen Nelly today? Well, what do you want with Nelly? Who are you? If you're a friend, then you may already be too late. Where is she? On her way to see Lady O. In the company the brutes pay to keep us in line. Hurry if you want to catch her. Now come nicely, Nelly. Lady O's expecting you. I don't want to. Let me go. Oh. 
I need to find Nelly before something bad happens to her. There you go. Here now. Where did they go? Nelly is in grave danger. That's it. There's the carriage. Nelly must be inside the building. Just because I'm over here, don't mean I can't take care of you! Nelly is in there somewhere. No doubt closely guarded and in mortal danger. the ripper where you sleep, my beauties. Game Fry. Take Nelly and see to it that woman does not follow us. Where did she go? That must be the carriage I'm after. Lady Owens. Whoa! <sighs> Nelly, I'm so sorry. She used me as a decoy and fled to Owens Manor. Hoping I'd cause your death, no doubt. She knew you'd come, Miss Fry. Lady Owens, the Ripper's eyes and ears in London. Kill her, and Jack will be forced to show himself. Hey! I'll look in on you soon, Nelly, I promise. Lady Owens will be expecting me. And I would not want to disappoint her.
Go away! Oh, for the no. love of Christ! Stop your whining! A bit weak in the knees, are we? Not ever. I know where of her. Barrier in the garden, he says. Like a dog would bury a bone. It ain't right, I tell ya. What if I'm next? We're expecting Miss Fry. Alert the men and be discreet about it. We're still running a business. Come drain my wine with honeyed lips, and I shall tell you a tale of unrequited love from the earth. You get back to our guests. If Miss Fry doesn't slit our throats, the Ripper should. Kill any woman lurking around the manor with a weapon. She turns out to be. Ah, ah, She's got ah,
done nothing. <laughs> Someone sneaked in! <laughs> I'll enjoy carving you! How did you get past my men? I should thank you, Miss Fry. I fear death at the Ripper's hands far more than at yours. What have you done with these men? The Ripper is entertaining them presently. Mr. Weaver's Brook will be joining them soon. Let us hope Jack has not found you yet, Mr. Weaversbrook.
Don't be so stingy, mate. You're taking the piss. It's your third fag this week. Hey, you! Huh? Stop in the market! Bugger! Go tell Lady O. You tell her. I need this job. Miss Fry, please tell me you found the Ripper. Murderer Oa's Manor. People continue to be murdered on my watch. I cannot protect you or your brotherhood forever. Witnesses saw someone matching your description. I should lock you up. He was book publishing. The man from the photograph at the manor, he owns his paper. Miss Fry! I will catch the Ripper, Inspector. But first, you must help me find Weaversbrook before he does. This way. He must not be seen. I believe Mr. Weaversbrook has a residence near St. Paul's. Now go. Mr. Weaversbrook is my best lead. And thanks to the inspector, the police aren't hunting for me yet. I must be careful not to anger or harm any policeman if I want to keep them on my side. You want. I'm hunting Jack the Ripper. No! Stay away! He sees and hears everything! My name is Evie Fry. I'm here to help... Mr. Jacob Fry's sister? Yes. What happened to these men? Gone. Taken. Dead. 
Please. The Ripper has my son. He, he will kill him. I will find your son and bring him home, sir. But first, you must come with me. Now. I'll accompany you to the location where my son was last seen. What can you tell me about the letters? I showed the one signed Jack the Ripper to the police. Of the hundreds they had examined, this one rang the most true. And so we printed it. The Yard was desperate. Still is. They hoped someone would identify the handwriting. No one did. Then I received this. You thought yourself very clever. I reckon when you informed the police. I see you on it, okay? And I mean to finish you and send your ears to your wife if you want. If you do, I will finish you. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. I published two more until Mr. Fry and my son convinced me to stop, in spite of the risk. My boy was a brilliant journalist, and now he is lost to me. Did you learn anything from the letters that might help us? I know only that they are real, and that the demon has got my boy. Fear is a powerful weapon. <laughs> One of my reporters was nearly beaten to death trying to look into my son's disappearance. Just out of here. On those docks. <laughs> Wait here, Mr. Weaversbrook. I will be back with good news before you know it. Lad is on board. Good. Mr. Jack will be pleased. Who's next? Some Tory bastard. One of Lady O's girls has taken care of him. I'll do with a proper bit of jam myself. Orders are to send lads to the pickup if anything goes sour down here. Billy's watching the docks. He'll warn them. I should scare some more information out of Jack's lieutenants. If I can find one. visit to these Hulk prison ships right after I find Mr. Weaversbrook's son.
Many thanks. Uh, Miss... Fry. Your father sent me. And he will reward you handsomely for your bravery. It's you who should be commended. Did you discover anything that could help me stop the Ripper? My kidnappers call him Mr. Jack. I overheard them mention the Deptford Hulks, where I was to join other hostages. Thank you. Be safe, Mr. Weaversbrook. These old Navy ships were hulked out to hold prisoners until they were assigned a convict ship leaving for the colonies. So this is where Jack keeps his quarry. Let's see if Jack is paying a visit to his captives. Jacob? Is that you? Help me. Miss, please, why am I here? No one will tell me. It's Jack. Jack the Ripper, I say. He's the one who abducted us. He starves and tortures us until we write to our families, begging them to do as he dictates, or we'll be slaughtered. Is he here? Have you seen the Ripper recently? Not for weeks. But he'll come back. And bring more poor suds to dance on the warders called for him. Jack has locked them up like animals. They'll all die of cholera. If the chief warder doesn't hang them first. Someone playing tricks on me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
I beg you, don't leave us to perish. The Chief Warder is a vile, sadistic man. No one spoke to me for weeks. Then the Warder's assistant came to ask me how much I weigh. I need to get into the main prison and find the Chief Warder before he hangs another man for Jack's entertainment. Dredge your Thames, you lazy bastards. The Chief Warder wants privacy. Don't lose heart, gentlemen. We can break out of here if we work together. Well, it's no use. We need explosives to blast through those doors. You gotta get the weight just right. Drop them gentle. Let them do the work. That way you can stretch their gullets a good four or five inches before they croak.
you are ten twelve inches. If you're dead, there's no tenant for me, is there? I've been manging for twenty minutes like that, stretching his gullet all the while. Mr. Jack likes when it lasts. No. You got to get the weight just right. Go see what's wrong up there, you simpering ass. Yes, sir. Well, a problem with the new pulley, sir. Fix it, you jolterhead. This work makes me proud, see. It's important work. Mr. Jack understands that. Look at you. Could eat two shoes, is it? You think often some old hangman's going to change what we do here? <laughs> We... What do you think? This was your brother's vision. His inspiration. I don't believe you. He told Mr. Jack how to rip the filth from this rotten city. But you don't have the balls to see what's right and necessary. Where's Jack? Where's the Ripper? <laughs> to hell with your right and necessary. That vile sadist was working for the Ripper. But there's no sign of Jack here. Oh, Jacob, you did not intend to breed this monster. But he is ours to destroy. The legacy of our brotherhood depends on it. I must inform Abilene about what I have discovered here. I need to speak to Frederick Abilene. This is an emergency. Well, where is he? Ripper struck again. Where? All right. Thank you, officer. Wait! You need to alert the local constable. Send as many men as you can to the old Hulk prisons. Jacob's sniveling twin sister thinks she can catch them. What the hell is this place? This place was shut down decades ago. Ah! Uh. 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 
That's my cue. The warder had orders to burn all their personal effects. The police must not find this evidence. No one must find my guest's personal effects.
I'd almost forgotten these. There will be time for more games of Saucy Jack once I've dealt with Miss Fry. Over at Hangman. Won't be long before my masterpiece will bring her running right into my arms. I look forward to the family reunion. Tell you by what right 
I am an officer of the law. I am not a member of your secret organization. Listen to me. Jacob knows you. No, you listen to me. I cannot cover for you much longer. All the evidence points to your brother, your order, you. You need to deliver the Ripper's head on a spike soon, or I'm afraid there'll be nothing to stop my men from arresting you in his stead. You'll have his head, even if it costs me mine. A young unfortunate, by far the youngest, at 25. Miss Kelly was found dead here at 10.45 this morning. He removed her organs, her heart, her dignity. You want me to see you as she did? Imagine the terror she felt. Do you hurt women just to prove you're a man, Jack? The kettle is still warm. That is a lot of blood. I can't make sense of these markings from this position. What's this? Jack must have left these markings for me. My gift to you, Miss Fry. And more to come, unless you do as Jack says. Follow the trail of blood through the looking glass. Jack wants me to return to the scene of his first crimes. I will do as you say, Jack, until I find you and send you to your own special hell. What did you discover? A message for me. The monster is going to lead me right to him, Inspector. I must return to the locations of the Ripper's first crimes. Don't let your fury blind you, Miss Fry. I would not lose you, too. If I do die, Inspector, I will take the Ripper with me. Annie Chapman was murdered near a cemetery in Whitechapel. I'm going to have to scare off this lot if I want to investigate in peace. This is where Jack ripped the life from Miss Chapman's breast, the second victim of his hideous crimes. He cut off her ring finger. So where is the ring?
Where does it lead? Damn it! Yet another one. Her assassin ring must be here somewhere. Jack wanted to be sure I'd find these rings. What kind of creed cannot protect its own? This message was intended first for my brother. Catherine Eddowes was murdered in a small square close to the train tracks. Falls on deaf ears. Who will avenge the blood of these unfortunate victims? Oh, 
Blood splatter. Blood splatters. I should follow these traces. Every assassin my brother turned against you and your insane creed. Her assassin ring must be here somewhere. Her assassin ring must be here somewhere. Two assassin's rings. Jack murdered two women here. Two of Jacob's initiates. What's happening that looks like there? a mess I should stay clear of. How many more must die before you see the truth? P.S. Your brother didn't listen, so I gave him a double lesson. Your creed failed them, as it failed my mother. Jack lived around here with his mother as a boy. That's where he's leading me. For Jack, only his mother's death counts as murder. What is this place? The Ripper didn't murder anyone here. What? I was born here, survived the madhouse and learned from the best until he betrayed me. Come test your creed against mine.
The murder of Jack's mother marks the day that the Ripper was born. And he blames my brother. Blames the Creed for failing me. What's happening to me? I should thank you, Evie. Jake was fired by his treachery. But in your memory, by today, Master Beast. He's inside my head. Where was Jake? Stabs then. Oh, my mother. Where was he when they dragged me to the madhouse? Face me, you monster! Am I losing my mind? What kind of creep cannot protect himself? <laughs> no! Please! Please! The Madhouse. Lambeth Asylum. Jack lures me through the looking glass. Now I must erase any trace of my identity. Time to pay a visit to my old doctor. It's time my old nurse paid for her negligence and abuse. Who are you? 
all for me. Let's show Dr. R. what a good locked up here. And now, I am the Ripper. Director Bradford will be happy to help me erase all mention of my stay in the hospital ledgers. Police mustn't find out I was a patient here. Must ever know that I was an inmate here. Time to prepare for Miss Fry's arrival. Let's let the lunatics out for a stroll. The more the merrier. Back to the beginning, eh, Jack? My brother freed you from this madhouse and made you one of us. risk being spotted, or harming a single police constable. She tried off that way! Jack's trail of death continues. Some woman sneaked in!
Jack's games. There must be other messages for me. You will like your prize, but you must descend into the abyss to retrieve it. In the basement. That is where Jack will spring his final trap. Jacob? Welcome to the reunion, Miss Frog. That's useless. You think you can kill me that way? <laughs> Pathetic. I'm getting nowhere. I should flee and try sneaking up on him. Try something else, perhaps. There is a sickness in this world, this fry. It made our crew. I lose patience with your child's play. Jacob thought he could hide from me too. But I am here now. I will tear into all cities, all the rot and shit of this city, and rip it. Still think you can hide from me. Powering in the shadows, Miss Fry. <laughs> Are you c ah! Ah! <laughs> Not make 
make a monster of me. You will not make a monster of me. The same, you and I. Oh, Jack. You were an assassin, yes, but we are not the same. And that is why your memory must be erased for all time. Rest in peace now, Jack. You and your twisted acolytes. Jacob. Miss Fry, what the hell happened here? Nothing, Inspector. Nothing happened here. Trust me. Jack the Ripper's dead. Inspector! Now help me, Frederick. I almost ever know that Jack the Ripper was an assassin. Jacob, I'm here. 